SRS is live too. Yo, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another edition of PWT Live Show. Yeah. 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 The infallible Phil Marks is here. Hairline the Heater is here. Um, whether there's four of you in here, whether there's 400 of you in here, whether there's 4,000 of you in here. We expect this to be our probably lowest viewed live show up front just because everybody's probably doing their own mania things. And we understand that. But we wanted to just come on live, react to WrestleMania night one, give you our thoughts, maybe go into Phil Marks bookmarks a little bit and just, you know, uh, hang out with you guys for a bit. And then we'll do the same thing tomorrow after night two. Hairline said as we were going live, oh, Sean Rossap is live too. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah, the You're worst. Obsessed. Yeah, the worst thing is that we're competing with the actual, the, um, the WWE post fight press conference or post mania press conference right we're competing i didn't realize that was even a thing on night one i thought that'd be a thing like night two um it will not take this shit yeah i <laughs> i thought night two they would cover like both nights and so if you guys have been following along i'm sick sicker as a mother but um also if you're paying attention at pro wrestle times on x you'll see uh phil shill Fill the shill, hey? I had Snickers, Slim Jims, Ruffles. Yeah, you did. All the sponsors. I was just just missing uh, Wheatley Vodka because that's new. Um, But it's a WrestleMania (laughs) party, right? So I have to have WrestleMania shit on this, right? For people to snack on sitting out. So did um, you uh, did you peel the Slim Jim or no? No, we still don't do that, bro. We're just still Ah. Slim Jims the long way. The way there's lick you so first this is how you eat a slim gym ready guys you lick the sides first and then you <laughs> kiss the top <laughs> what is this <laughs> who does that oh man it's pwt after dark baby what's up as you guys yeah. file in here make sure <laughs> oh, yeah. make, make sure you check us out at pro wrestle times on youtube you guys like we're at almost 500 subs on there so thank you but we're at over 2000 subs on pwt clips which is the main channel where you find funky little videos and the clips of the podcast and we just appreciate appreciate you guys so much sorry i've been drinking like four hours you know what i mean um but we just appreciate <laughs> and we don't condone whatever but you diet pepsis we're talking about but yeah dude i uh 
man, I had a ball. It was a great WrestleMania. What can I say? Um, people, oh, one, one shill fill, you know, because I'm shilling. Uh, but I don't know, guys. It was a great, uh, it was a great WrestleMania. I had a great time. Hairline, what were your thoughts? Um, just the vibes overall. Don't give me like an overall thought of the show or anything, but like, what were just your vibes overall? of the night did you leave like feeling good did you leave feeling sour did you leave going yeah that was a that was a mania you know we still have another night of this that's what's so epic sorry but what what did you think about just tonight overall vibes as far as like your vibe coming out of things i was extremely entertained and i'm very uh i was very sports entertained as you would say very sports entertained my man yes yes absolutely so um I want to share the screen for a second here as we do Phil Marks book marks. So they opened and I hope WWE doesn't pull me down, but they opened with a new package of then now forever together hairline. Are you ready for this? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But this is cool. Hey, right. like this was dope. Maybe they're all triple H actually. They should be. Exactly. I'm a Paul Levesque guy. But look at that, like Rock, Cena, Roman, Austin. Like Roman's the goat, dude. Yeah, and you guys know that the PW, yeah. the PWT Galaxy and the WWE Universe are heavily intertwined. But I just thought that was very. Um, was I not sharing the goddamn screen? Yeah, I am. Thank, thankfully, <laughs> I was like, hopefully, I was just actually sharing the screen there. But yeah, that was great. I thought that was great. Um, Oh, yeah, it, was oh, yeah, it, was real, it was real great and then here's triple h on his way out to the fucking arena as the show's popping off his music hits you know he's got those vibes just that feeling we've all felt or a lot of us have felt welcome to wrestlemania oh shit time to play the game uh and how you play it <laughs> it's all about the chola it, 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 it. yeah dude that sh this shit is uh... <laughs> so that was <laughs> that was awesome and then um so yeah and then we have a dave Meltzer moment that we'll um we'll get into buddy because you know that we oh, can't, can't wait. One. so do you want to go over the card or do you want to do press conference shit first what do you want to do um chat can tell us too sorry if we haven't read any chat but we're just trying to uh, oh yeah let's, let's go to the chat let's go to the chat real quick um here we go chat we have some members ever. in here. Um, yeah, I'm a Paul Levesque guy. Me too. Great show overall. Super stoked for Yeah, I'm super pumped for tomorrow. It's going to be incredible, guys. Oh, it's going to be real great. Uh, 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 where's Bleacher Report? Let's get our Bleacher Report boys on the scene. So uh, written by Doc Chris Mueller. 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 He writes uh, most of these reviews here um yeah man i had a really good blast oh, yeah. I ate a lot of, did you what did you do did you just drink beers did you just hang out um what did you get yeah, up I to drink a bunch of blue moons yeah dude i'm drinking i drank a ton of beers i got tequila here i might do some some shots of tequila no i don't know if we can really talk about it. i but we were i was hanging out i ate a bunch of pizza it was really good man i had like you know there was what like kind a of pizza man there we, so i i ordered everyone like a, i got like a like a six cheese and then i got like a double pepperoni one and then i got one that was like a chicken oh, bacon yeah. ranch one yeah yeah you know and i got like a bunch of wings and shit so like a bunch of food left over it was awesome it was like a great time it was great it was really great uh you know and the boys came by and it was uh, an awesome time and there's still people here chilling so if you guys hear noise or like karaoke or any shit just ignore it um because <laughs> i just like i gotta jump on live quick sorry pwt listeners are where the top pod listeners are awaiting to hear what i think the infallible phil marks thinks about um wwe wrestlemania so yeah i just people are in the comments going yeah it was a great night i agree it was great so wrestlemania 40 results here bleacher report as we like to go to um I don't know. So it should just be said that all of the packages, all of the production, 
was just uh, the whole arena when they showed the fucking arena dude how were you feeling like dude they pan across that crowd it's packed to the titties i mean just the setup looked great everyone was shitting on the set because it's smaller but i'm like no that just means more people are there and then the x and the l were like video screens and it was just like i don't know everything was hitting on all cylinders and then the video packages were insane and for this becky versus Rhea match the uh the like the however they had the camera whatever camera they were using to like film them during the samantha irvin in introductions that shit right. was just spectacular like it just looked great um and then we get into the first match which was Rhea ripley versus becky lynch and um this shit wasn't like charlotte versus Rhea. this wasn't like the best match ever they said that becky had strep throat it seemed like she was working sick or injured possibly i don't know but she was just trying to sell that book i actually put money on becky lynch i parlayed lynch and jimmy uso to both win because they were such good underdogs so the return would have been great but they both lost and i was actually kind of rooting against them to be perfectly honest but Rhea ripley retains man the match was actually really good i just kind of don't like i was like finisher kick out set up a spot finisher into the buckle finisher finish i just think that's too much but like, you know, Rhea Ripley just let her hit the riptide one time and it's done. But when she did, like, the electric chair drop on the outside and all that, that shit was awesome, man. What were your thoughts on this match? Yeah, I don't know. It was pretty solid, man. Um, I, <laughs> it was adorable that Rhea got to have her mark out moment here with motionless and white and whatnot. So are you a fan? Are you a fan? Like, are you familiar with them? Because I wasn't familiar, but they, they were pretty good live. But the guy knew when to, because here's the problem. I'm going to tell you guys from an audio production standpoint. And they had this with Lil Wayne too. WWE, because their performers talk over the live crowd and the music sometimes, they have the, the volume of the vocals like cranked way high. So when that band was singing, but that guy knew when to like cut out and just let his backtrack do it. You know, he was very professional. He knew how to not have like a botched performance. Yeah, but but like Little Wayne, you could tell even him when he came out, he's like, damn, my vocals are way too high. And that's just because like when the wrestlers are talking, whatever. So when you're doing music, it's a different level, you know, like good engineers can spot that out. Anyways, I'm not trying to get nervous. Yeah, yeah, but that I thought she just had tremendous aura, and that band entrance was awesome and well deserved. And when I saw her come out the band, I was like, "Yeah, she's probably gonna win," you know. But I, but whatever. Sorry, you go ahead though. Your thoughts on the match? I thought fucking Becky looked like a goddamn Budweiser can. <laughs> <laughs> That's she was all covered in her book. Yeah, she's just trying to sell a book. Yeah, what a mark. That shit was weird. Yeah, I, I don't know. No, I get what she was going for, but guess what, hon? You just came off as like a Budweiser cam, which I guess truly with the huge redneck demographic behind the WWE, she just got way more over with them. So, And did you, you know. see how Dude Wipes was sponsoring the match, the women's match? <laughs> it just said dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but so my favorite spot here was like she did – she attempted – Becky attempted the top uh, top rope leg drop in the, on the Rhea, and Rhea reversed it into that prison break submission and whatnot. That shit was right. fucking sick. Yeah, it, it was it was awesome, man. And are you okay with the winner? Like, what do you think moving forward? Like, to me, yeah. I went, okay, this yeah. is a great opener. Rhea won her shining moment. You know, like like who like she just takes on all comers now. Still, like who do they build up to eventually defeat her? Somebody. But your your thoughts moving forward with Rhea Ripley. I know you're a Judgment Day mark, but that aside, just moving forward with Rhea, what do you think and how do you feel? Mommy's always on top. Point blank. Period. <laughs> Judgment Day forever, son. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was looking for it. I was looking for it as he's um okay. So as we move along here, uh and yeah, uh Coco Jones sang the national anthem. Triple H came out and was like, Welcome to WrestleMania. That shit was awesome. But um yeah, and then and then me and Hairline talked off air and we chilled through the two hour pre-show too, which was pretty cool. But then we go into the six 
the six pack ladder match. Now, before the match started, we had the pretty deadly, who I love fucking. It's great. The fucking pretty yes, deadly. Yes, boy. Yes, boy. And they got over by putting over all of the teams in this match and saying, we'll be waiting for whoever wins this match. Like they got over doing the promo package for this match. It was genius. It's how you get over all the teams in this match, but remind everyone, oh, this pretty deadly team, we're invested in them. Like, yeah, they're not on this match, but they'll, they're, we have faith and stock in these guys. So I, I don't know. I thought that was awesome. And then this ladder match was crazy. I was popping out a bunch of shit. Um, you had like the Tyler Bate burning hammer where he stacked him up on the ladder. You had the, the, um, and I like the psychology. So like spoiler alert, whatever, that's what you're here for. Waller and theory grab the SmackDown titles and then Waller gets power bombed through a ladder. And then he just, pow- he just powders out of the match. Like he's just done. And it's like, exactly. You already won the SmackDown belts. Like, why the fuck would you even keep fighting after you just get power bombed through a ladder? Like, the psychology behind it all was good. I felt like maybe it went a, a smidgen too long, like, probably. Um, I felt like the right people won with Miz and Truth. It gave every, like, Miz, uh, Truth was just money. He was just there for, like, the tag and the, you know, like, doing Cena shit and just, like, d- doing the pin and just all of that stuff was just so on point. Um, but the one thing though, was at one point ref Jessica Carr was like when Damian priest was going to climb up the ladder, um, for that one spot, just ref Jessica Carr was like slapping him, like watch it back. And she's like, Hey, no, Hey. And then he looks at her and he's like, da, da, da. Like he says something to her and then she lets it go. And then he climbs up the ladder. Now people on X pointed out to me, they were like, yo, that ladder was buckled on the other side and she was right. warning priest like yo don't climb that shit switch ladders and so he made the right call that he knew was safe for him like don't worry i'm not climbing this whole thing but what a good referee to that's her job bro like she identified that and had the balls to on wrestlemania go priest no don't hurt yourself you know don't break your fucking right. leg being a mark like you know this ladder's buckled type shit so i just really a round of applause for ref jessica Carr. <laughs> and even even though even though priest ignored her direction he was like i got this or whatever he said to her but wow and then and then uh i i, I you know it's not it, this wasn't the greatest ladder match of all time multi-man but i like that now for a while there wasn't any tables or chairs and then the tables and chairs got brought in and i was like wow they did a great job of having a match with just only ladders so i thought that was cool but the philly marks start chanting for tables and then jd does that huge bump like he was just there to take a huge bump off the fucking through the through the tables on the outside so I thought all of that was was really good, and I just I like the champions that came out. Some of it felt a little clunky. It felt a little long near the end there. But sorry, what were your thoughts on this match? Pretty solid match, man. Um, <laughs> I saw I I was under the impression there was no more cosplaying being allowed. So why right, right. DIY get, DIY guy to come out as DX. DIY so, literally came out as DX. No, there it, it it and then like um uh Apollo um sorry Austin Creed Xavier Woods came out as Apollo Creed who he based his character off of in TNA. So he cosplayed himself in TNA which is a cosplay of Apollo Crews from Rocky and Kofi was cosplaying as Rocky as well. So I tweeted that out. I was like, remember when the dirt sheet Mark said that cosplay wasn't allowed in WWE anymore? Yeah, that's some bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, so sorry, hairline. You go ahead. Our truth's hot tag was amazing. You oh, know that yeah. that popped the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, the hot tag um, and the fucking ladder match, genius. Right. And okay, so remember two, uh, maybe not, maybe two or three fucking PWT podcasts ago. I told you fucking a town down under we we're gonna win the straps for yada yada yada. 
Right. And what a good unexpected win when they've been like kind of losing and jobbing type shit, you know, like taking RKOs and stunners and yeah, Doug. It's yeah. just like you say though, I just like I see shit other people don't see. And and, and, and think yes, and think about on SmackDown, Paul with his US title after he wins tomorrow, Wait, you know, and then fucking Theory and, and Waller with their tag titles, and then they'll change them to the WWE tag titles. Then the raw ones right. will get changed to the world tag title, or would that's what's gonna happen, yeah. So that's just fucking that's awesome. Um, so moving along. We had Andrade and Rey Mysterio versus Santos, Escobar, and Dominic Mysterio. Sorry if everyone cringed out. I'm drinking. You got to deal with it. Um, So this match was actually really solid, I thought. um, I tweeted out. I X'd out at Pro Wrestle Times. I said, uh, isn't Andrade happy that he left dot, dot, dot? Never mind. <laughs> like, huge spot in the Rumble, featured on WrestleMania, tagging with Ray. I don't know. Ray gets his win over, right. uh, yeah, over Dom. And uh, just a cool lucha match. There was, I, I didn't like when, like, the LWO and everyone starts flipping off each other and doing flips and, like, in the middle of the match, like, wouldn't that be a DQ? These guys aren't even a fucking match. They're running in the ring, flipping over and shit. I, just, I thought that was stupid. But otherwise, like, it was a solid match. Your thoughts? Yeah, oh, so, I'm sick, what, dude. I'm what was sick great? As a motherfucker. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's okay. I am, dude. I'm fucking just, I've had a cold. You guys will hear it, too, me progressively be sicker because we recorded, like, four hours of PWT podcast that will release on Monday. And you just hear me at the start of that, I'm sick. And then the next recording, I'm way sicker. And then now, right, the live recording, I'm just like, I'm fucking dead. I'm toast. Tomorrow, I don't even want to hear my voice. But yeah, dude, your thoughts on the Lucha match? Yeah, yeah, Adderall. (laughs) No, I'm not. Yeah, we're we're doing soda water. Um, Yeah, you you tell me about this, and I'm going to do a a shot of tequila in honor of the LWO. How about that? So you you Uh... tell me about it. 21 so of you guys in here. Let's get the chats to uh, 15 at least. The the chats. The likes to 15 or 20. If you can't tell them pouring alcohol as we talk. 20 watching. Likes. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at 8 right now. Let's yeah, yeah. Likes to 15, 15, 15, please. But... Thank you. Phil's drunk, so you know you're going to get me snapping. You guys, I was sick and angry on the please. pre-recorded show. So on Monday, tune into PWT Podcast, YouTube.com at sla- slash at Pro Wrestle Times. Uh, cause dude, I'm, I fucking snap on shit. Even WWE, I was just burying shit. I was like, dude, I'm sick and cranky. You know what I mean? My girlfriend's getting me beer right now. Maybe then I'll cheer up. I'm cheery now, but dude, earlier this morning we were recording. I was just a cranky, sick mother yeah. burying shit, but hairline. I'm so sorry. I want your thoughts on the Lucha, Lucha madness, Lucha mayhem. Your thoughts. Oh yeah, no, I, I want to talk about the Lucha stuff, but first we need 15 likes on the video and we're only at yeah, yeah, you're right. Know. If you guys want Hairline's thoughts, let's get at least to 15 likes if there's 20 of you watching above 20. I'm surprised there's even that many. I thought we'd have like three. That's the shit, at, right. It is the shit because like when yeah. I went on Monday head to head with Raw, we went like 150, but we're going head to head with the WrestleMania press conference. I didn't even know that was a thing, guys. So all of the YouTube viewers are there watching that. We're going to EFAP it in a minute. I'll just hang out, watch the whole thing with you guys. So if you didn't watch it or you want to watch it, just hang out. But you got to get those likes up. Hairline, let me know when you're good to go. In the meantime, I'm going to play some music, and I'm going to fucking drink tequila. So you guys are going to do that with well, me. Well, I would love to give my review, but we're only at 11 likes, so I don't know what to do here. Hairline's being stingy tonight, guys. It is PWT Live, Saturday nights. Uh, I guess I'm just going to hit my bong while we're waiting, but I'm going to hit the mute button because YouTube doesn't like those kind of things. Because here's the thing. Usually we get like over 100 motherfuckers, but we're extra late and the WWE press conference is going on. So I understand, but Hairline's not as forgiving as me. So even if you're a hater and you want to hate on us, (laughs) hit that like. Dude, Alt Jake, sorry, let me read some fucking chats here from members. Guys, get a membership, you be a part of Who doesn't hit the like button when they first enter the vid? Man, even when I enter vids, I disagree with I hit the like button because I appreciate the effort a motherfucker puts in 
to it. Now, I'm not saying you have to be like me, but let's just hang out, man. Andrade killed it tonight. Yeah, he really did. Me too. And I'm so sorry if my uh, nasally shit is annoying, guys. I'm real apologetic. You're going to have to deal with it or you don't get a show. <laughs> just kidding. I'm sassy. I'm real sassy. Okay. I think the likes are up. We're good. It's up enough, guys, because now people are just going to hate on us. Hey, we're at oh, 13. Are you, are you hoarding the show? 12 likes. Oh, hoarding the show. Yeah, Hairline, go ahead, though. Your, your thoughts on the uh, Lucha Madness. So what the fuck was Ray supposed to be? And holy shit, was he struggling to get out of that? He wardrobe? was dressed like the Philadelphia Eagles, which my only gripe <laughs> was that that's what, like, <laughs> you're laughing. That's why the WrestleMania theme was green and white and black. That's the Philadelphia Eagles colors. And now what it was weird because, like, it seemed like Santos was dressed, like, in, in the same shit. So I was kind of like, man, just. I don't know. I would have came decked out in like LWO shit. You know, I'd have been like black and white and green and red, but who am I to talk? Uh, You know, who am I to tell Rey Mysterio what to do? So anyways, your your thoughts (laughs) on the match itself. So I thought that double body big splash was sick as fuck. That's the first time I've seen something like that. So The double um, cross body, you mean? Like to the outside where it stacked him up? Yeah, that was sick, dude. Yeah. And then um, Joaquin Wild did that rope launch. That was also very fucking sick. Yeah, I heard people burying him like, oh, he's Filipino. And I'm like, yeah, he's like a mix, dude. He's like Puerto Rican and Filipino yeah. or some shit. Like, who gives? What the fuck are you talking about? Shut the fuck up. What? God damn it. Okay, listen, and Yokozuna was Samoan, you guys. So, oh, no. Polynesian oh, Islands. Guys. Polynesian Islands. Okay. But Andrade stood out, I guess. Zelina Vega got her little spots in there. She was kind of cheesy, though. I don't know. Some of the LWOs a little cheesy when they all start doing flips and dives. She was cosplaying, too, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. (laughs) Okay, so fuck off, dirt cheeks. It's all dirt cheap bullshit. And then, oh, sorry, what did you think about the two football players? So uh, Lane Johnson and uh, Jason Kelsey came in. Uh, they're like ch- world champion uh, NFL Philadelphia Eagle champions. What did you think about them coming out and then throwing Dom in the ring and then celebrating with Rey Mysterio and all that, a hometown crowd? Little I thought enemy. that was dumb as shit. Caroline, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do you like football? I <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it's scripted. Guys, not to even pull the curtain back, hairline once. I'll Google it. Hairline once was in a band. Can I can I tell the story, hairline? Like about Yeah, I don't give a shit. Hair, hairline was in a band, right? And uh they made a song. <laughs> And they went viral, like they were all like <laughs> blowing up and on the, the news and shit because of the Green Bay Packers, right? And he's in this band, yeah. And then they all got in a fight and like broke up, <laughs> like immediately after they found mild success. I think that shit's hilarious. Um, but that's more or less the story, right? Hairline, am I am I am I off base on that? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's great, bro. That's life. Bro. That's that life. Shit. It's like I don't even like football. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. That's why. That's why I bring. It. That's why it's so funny. It's like you just yeah. made this. You don't even like football. You're in a Packers jersey. You're in this song. That's like <laughs> blowing up for football. Yeah, sure. As fuck like making money though. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so funny, man. Um. Anyways, dude. Anyways, so moving along, we get Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso. Now, Jay comes out with little fucking Wayne, dude. Lil Wayne. Wheezy baby, and he comes out a milli, a milli, a milli, a mi-. Then it flips to day one, day one ish, just me, ooze. And so this was dope. And the crowd during it was fucking yee, no yee, yee. And they paced it out really well, storytelling really well, great match. But they got in that spot where they started trading super kicks like the young bucks, and I'm sitting there going, whoa. What happened? Like, this was a solid match otherwise, and I was going to tweet out, like, haters are going to say this match is shit. But it's just storytelling and pacing and 
taking their time to make everything mean something like this is actually a really great match and that's why the live crowd's so into it like maybe you're not at home and i guess that's an aw excuse but then that super kicks shit happened back and forth and i went yeah but it was like a good refresher and sort of the middle of the card even though this was supposed to be a marquee match so i'm indifferent towards it um and i'm i thought the move was to let jimmy win to try and like give him heat because jay's so over but jay deserves his moment as main event jay uso like he really deserves that like one-on-one he gets his moment so i'm okay with the winner um but i just uh i hope my assessment was good pwt listeners i hope that was a good assessment that's all i can say on it hairline your thoughts yeah man so like at first i thought this was gonna be the match of the night and it had those vibes and that energy and whatnot, but then they started prostituting the goddamn super kick to death, man. And like, it was, where was Shawn Michaels to like be like, no, don't do that? Jerking off in the back to this fucking match for <laughs> sure, but so were the young bucks. Anyways, um, I don't know, man. This had like the Will Osprey element where it's just all like, you guys are fucking just stepping on your own dicks and like making each. They didn't need to do that. Over. Yeah, what they could have did it was, was all like so they could have they could have protected the super kick in this match and made when right. once the super kick land they could have built up to where when the super kick did land from one of them it was like oh or like they're both trying to land it neither of them can land and then maybe you do a spot where they double each other they both landed at the same time but bow they both go down like something like that but sorry I'm fucking where's the X Files right I'm fucking fantasy Mark book and shit that already already fucking happened hairline i gotta expose myself sorry guys new soundboard hairline hairline sorry you your thoughts <laughs> yeah man like i was saying though it could have been the fucking match of the night if they didn't fucking step on their own dicks with these 62 fucking super kicks and it was like okay so like what he did two super kicks in a row and then suddenly the third one isn't shit and like oh god i, I know. know it's just I like know. this I, it's just that man. Like, I hate to say this, but like that that AEW wrestling, yeah. just like is part of today's culture. You know what I'm saying? But like, why the Usos doing that? You don't think they know better than that? I feel like they they should know better than that. But I just maybe... don't think they give a fuck. I think they know that they're they're, that they're fucking... just super over. Yeah, and that their cousin is one of the top dogs in the business. I know, but don't you think so... that would make them like? I feel like that. I feel like because they've been wrestling with Roman and other people, they've had a bit of a filter. And then for this match, obviously it's WrestleMania. Triple H is like, just go out there and do your thing. And I think they just took it too far. Like that was just kind of silly for me, you know. Um, but I'm not gonna like bury it. The match was like great otherwise. So like if you just yeah, yeah, yeah right move that Story segment, telling. yeah, and, and like uh, that sequence, if you will, hairline. I know you like that term, but oh, yeah, um, yeah, that's my favorite. I, I like top 10 sequence videos from WrestleMania. I like, hit the like button. Hit, please do. Yeah, guys, please. I'm sick and I'm still bringing you a show. You got to. Dustin cut a really good promo backstage. He let, hasn't. Dustin Rhodes, are you talking about? Are we talking about AEW now? Just turned on collision. Dustin Rhodes versus Joe is apparent. Okay, John. See, that's why I respect the PWT listeners. Like, I wasn't even thinking about Collision, but I guess, <laughs> I guess you, right? Thanks for keeping us tapped in. I mean, that'll be a good match, but who gives a fuck, John JID? Ha, uh, dude, I was in a band years ago, and the lead singer from Jimmy Eat World saw us perform and told us we were great, and maybe could open for them at a local show. We broke up literally days later. Yeah, that e- that goofy ego shit. Like, hey, everyone, how about you chill? And make yeah. some money, and then you fucking, and then you fucking, yeah, yeah then you work out your shit later. Yeah, it's fucking stupid, man. Anyways, though, let's move along on WrestleMania. Match was what it, what it was. Dude gave it a C plus. Hairline, do you agree with that? No, fuck this fucking guy, dude. Every time, dude. <laughs> God. I, I you fucking all the report. All the collision matches probably have B's to A's. Well, I'm going to do a shot of tequila while Hairline takes us through um, Damage Control, Jade Cargill, Naomi, and Bianca Belair. Uh, it was a six-woman tag. Uh, the Joshis versus Naomi, Bianca, and uh, Jade, who were wearing cowboy hats and shit on SmackDown. 
they came out on this mega elevator platform that that they like a they like descended rather yeah they descended cody ascended yeah so they descended and then and then they all walk off to each of their music jade goes first very tasteful because she deserves that and then naomi second now speak about the big three as they're calling themselves shout out o'shea jackson jr and ice cube but you got bianca belair the top in in wwe you got naomi trinity who's the top in tna and then you got jade cargill who's the top in AEW, bar none and they all just formed the big three they make their entrance we all knew it jade was going to get the win i felt like that was just a shoe in um even if you looked at the betting odds it was just like astronomically not in the favor of Da- of uh, damage control but um i called out the dirt sheets as well on x um because they were all saying that oscar was hurt and she wouldn't do much in this match and they were all saying that uh jade uh jade wouldn't do much in this match either they're gonna protect her and blah 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 and jade did a bunch and oscar took some really big bumps so um phil was fucking right Tell again yeah. uh hairline your thoughts on this great match i x'd out you could not look more you could not look like more of mega stars than jade and bianca and trinity what what we or uh naomi fatu rather what what are your thoughts on the match oh man fucking so like jade looked really strong and had a really nice pop but she was still like green and botched yeah. a couple moves and whatnot man so like, yeah yeah but she's still light years ahead of where she was at in in a and the damage control like sold it off like they knew how to like shine her up i felt like yeah even though yeah i mean we're not talking oh this was the god's gift but it it was just like a a glorified squash in my opinion you know where the where the uh, sorry you go ahead you go ahead sorry no dakota kai was real great yeah she's she's a real good leader top tier um and I, I would have to say, honestly, man, Bianca Belair would be the MVP of this match. She really looks like, right. Well, hold oh, on. Yeah, man. Let's think about it. I think, no, you know what? I think damage control for just selling their asses off. I think they're the MVPs, but, you know? No? Yeah. So, like. <laughs> they sold. They were selling the whole time. Come on. No, you're completely right, and like that is a huge element of wrestling is the enhancement talent, talent level, like or not, not level. The being enhanced. Oh, God damn, I'm so, you guys, we've been drinking since like, <laughs> hours now. Oh man, the enhancement talent, talent element. You know what I'm saying? Making your opponent look good and helping them get over. And um, the Joshi fucks definitely did that tonight. Right on. Um, but did Jade come across oh, as a yeah, star? Brother. This, oh yeah, brother. I, I'm just like Jade came across as a star, and you'd give that like that's how you present her, right? WrestleMania, the biggest platform, dude. Like they just here's this freak of nature athlete that we're gonna shove down your throats for the next five to ten years. You're down. Yeah, oh yeah. She's and she's got that Goldberg like element. Um and her mic skills are are definitely there already, you know. She's not lacking in that department. She's just like she's kind of like um Janelle Shaw. It's just kind of like slow it down a little bit in certain areas. That's all it is. Everyone in AEW needs to learn that lesson. So moving along, Gunther versus Sami Zayn. And did Phil tell you guys what was gonna happen? Or no, just kidding. I pulled the melter. I said either Zayn is gonna win here which I was more confident on. So you guys know, if you listen to Phil Marks, you listen to PWT, you guys know, excuse me, that I said he's probably going to win. Like I was stacking my chips on, dude, it's his time. Like you guys wanted him to be Roman. You think they're not going to give Sammy his time? You know, like this is his time to win this belt. Like, I'm sorry. And the reason I don't, I disagree with like, oh, the Chad Gable build. I still argue with that. What was the build? What was the build? Like two weeks of shit? And then people are complaining about the two weeks of shit with yeah, Sammy. Video, video, video. The same amount of shit. What are you talking about? Like, 
So I just disagree with, I just, it's like, yeah, dude, they hyped up Gable because in that whole, ch- in that match, it was like, we, they, he, they're trying to hype up. They just did a video package on him. You guys are acting like they hyped him and built him up like this. No, they didn't. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Hairline probably disagrees with me. Everyone probably disagrees with me, but you, no, they didn't build Gable up like this. Sammy's been being built. You guys were okay, saying on. one in Montreal. You guys were the ones all crying about it. Now you're crying. Oh, he can't beat Gunther. Oh, no, he's not the one to beat Gunther. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's going to. Like, it was so obvious. And I told you guys, also, they're going into Paris. They need French speakers. Um, Logan Paul is going to win tomorrow, but I think KO versus Logan Paul is going to be the rematch one-on-one in Paris, France. But Sami Zayn versus Gunther 2 or Sami Zayn versus Gable is what's going to go down in... uh, in in uh backlash paris but i told you guys i did pull the melter i said either he's gonna win here and he's gonna go into paris with the belt or he's gonna lose and then and the only reason i said that it was because they just started shoehorning in this gable shit where i was like maybe they do some fuck finish with gable or something like maybe there's some weird shit but then sammy will get crowned in paris but what's gonna happen in paris is that Sammy's going to rematch Gunther and I'm pulling a Meltzer again, or he's going to fight Gable and he's going to have like a big moment there too where he defends the IC title. That's just going to happen. So we spoiled it here first, even though I melted it, but um, I'm not a conventional dirt sheet. I'm not a dirt sheet at all. But I did call it. Let's be fucking honest here. Like I was riding on the stack. I was telling everyone, you know, I was like, it's Sammy's winning. Like, I'm so sorry. He's going to be the one to dethrone Gunther. I knew it. And the match was great. This was storytelling embodied in a wrestling match right there. This was a um, – someone on Toon Talk Wrestling, I want to say AEW Disciplinary Committee, shout him out. I believe he said that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, they want to involve Sylvester Stallone somehow, and if they did, it would be during this match. And then I pointed out, yeah, they trusted Sammy with Johnny Knoxville and the jackass guys. Like, he's a guy they trust to be to work with celebrities and all of this sort of shit. So I was like, for sure. But no, no Sylvester Stallone. All good. But this was like a word-for-word, scene-for-scene Rocky type shit. And uh, I don't know. This was storytelling in pro wrestling at its finest this match right. won anyone over if you were watching i even saw it on x and twitter at pro wrestle times on x i saw it um oh, people yeah. people who i saw tweeting out yeah the bots the people who i saw tweeting out even you know like uh oh god like uh no it should be gunther like sammy can't win this and and this and that and, and it's fine we all fucking like dude i like Caroline and I thought Jimmy and Jay was going to be way better than it was. So I'm not fucking, you know what I mean? Like this, I'm just saying I've seen people go, Oh shit, Sammy deserved. Oh, that was great. Oh, I shifted to Sammy. Exactly. Because that's what pro wrestling is at its core is like those two guys went in the ring. They told the story and it won everyone over. We all wanted Sammy to, to win. His wife was in the front row more than mama Rhodes. I thought mama Rhodes would be featured more than Sammy's wife, but nah, nah. Hairline, I blew this match to death. A lot of people were saying before this, oh, I don't care about this match. And I kept ranting and raving and putting this match over and ranting and raving about it because I think this is a great... I always knew this was going to be like one of the best matches of the whole Mania weekend. I think it's going to stand up as that. And I think this match was fucking brilliant. And it was the right move. We're going to Paris with a French-speaking Canadian baby. Hairline, your thoughts. Yeah, man, Sammy's wife was really like the star of this match, huh? <laughs> Dude, brilliant! And her, and his um, kids weren't his kids there at the start. Yeah, his, he kept his kid backstage though. I, so who I, the hell I know, was watching just, the kid? They put him over, like, dude, his wife, his kids. He hugs Kevin on the way out. Yeah, he deserves this, man. It was fucking. This was his crowning moment. Do you guys know why? Because. Your boy Phil said it here first as well. He's never going to be world champion. He's Roddy Piper. Now, Roddy Piper holds an affinity in my heart for reasons I can explain in other ways in another time. But on air, he just holds an affinity being a Canadian born, and I'm in a Canadian born. Sami Zayn, the same thing. I have an affinity for this man. Sorry, Hairline, I want your thoughts on this match, dude. Yeah. I blew it to death. Not to deflect it. (laughs) 
not not to deflect it right back to you, but aren't you like half native, half French Canadian, or is it just? You well, certainly, be- yeah, yeah, yeah. That like I definitely have French. I'm Métis, so that's like Cree and French. Do you know what I mean? So I have uh, definite French Canadian ties and stuff. Um, je peux parler en français, but it's not just that. It's also yeah, see, like. Yeah, yeah, it's not just that. It's just, it's also uh yeah. So he's like the Roddy Piper of this generation, but not in the heel sense. Sort of in when he was doing his conspiracy shit, though, it was great. It was great, but yeah, like, no. but this babyface run has been astronomical, and the fact that people were ready for him to dethrone Roman, but weren't ready, but are gonna complain about him beating Gunther. I knew this whole time. Um, you fecal. Fucking, yeah, fickle, dude. You got fecal. That's poop. Yeah, yeah, fecal. Yeah. Who's the fecal? Hey. Um, Who's the fecal? No, any, I, I wasn't I called to this WrestleMania, but now that you said fecal, maybe I'll make an appearance. Sorry, go ahead, dude. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you fecal. Yeah. Send me the video of you peeing. Oh, see. <laughs> Yo, here it lies. So as a French Canadian, how did it feel watching Sammy win and have this <laughs> WrestleMania moment? It was uh it was great. It was great. Grun- Gunther's like Gunther is like my favorite That's wrestler. Gunther. He's like uh one of my all time. I'd put him in like my top fifteen, probably ten, oh, yeah. fifteen, probably fifteen. I'd have to really break it down, but he's up there and uh I I uh it, it, like I want him to reign forever, but it's time. Let him go fight for the world title and win a world title, you know? Jesus Christ. It's, it's his time, you know. How did it feel for you though? Tell me about the match airline. You're not telling me about any spots where you like the double. The, Sammy hit him with the double um, half, half and half suplexes on the neck. Um, Sammy hit him with the haluva kick. You like all that shit? You like the way they did it or what? I just didn't see this coming, man. I, I really thought it was going to be what you had predicted here with Sammy somehow getting the rematch, you know, and then, and then getting crowned in front of, Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's crazy to me, man. So, like, you know, but I guess we'll see. We'll see based off how tomorrow goes if if uh, Logan Paul retains, which obviously he will, you know. But we'll see if that's the angle they go with Kevin Owens winning and whatnot. Um, so, if not, you Paul- WWE hire fucking hire holler at Phil because yeah, <laughs> he's got that. <laughs> hairline. So Paul Nolan's on the show and he's talking about yeah, you know, at Bash at Berlin. Oh, yeah. Gunther's going to like win the title like it's just made for him. And then they go clash at the castle this year. It's not in Cardiff. It's in fucking Scotland where Drew's from. So what do you think about it seems kind of laid out, right? Like Drew beats Seth tomorrow. Drew defends in Scotland. And then or or if he doesn't win tomorrow, then he wins in Scotland. It's, I'm doing the same thing with Gunther here and Sammy because that's how you have to play it. You have to book like WWE. Don't just do your own fantasy mark booking. That's why PWT's goatist. Yeah, do your own mark booking, but then think about like how uh, they. Would. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Think about how how they would how they would book. So it's like okay, either 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 Drew's gonna win tomorrow or he's gonna lose, but then he's gonna win in Scotland and then he's gonna lose to Gunther in Berlin, right? Because also the stories that Gunther has his number in the IC pursuit as well. So, right? Like, am I wrong on that? I think that's the fucking we got or you got it laid out. So, thirty of you guys in here watching, thank you so much. Let's get those likes up. What are the likes at here, line? Fourteen guys, thirty watching. Let's get up to twenty likes. Let's get up to twenty for sure. Um, yeah, come on, thirty yeah, people I'm watching. Sick, I'm like sick, sick dude. I'm fucking sick and drunk. You know, so so hold on. Excuse me. Before we get into the main event, let's read some of these comments. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good call. You know, we're not even trying to rush through this. Like, we'll hang out for a while. Right. Let's, let's some comments. Let's go back. Oh my goodness! And we have a super chat. I didn't even see oh. Will Chisholm. When did oh this come in? Will Chisholm. Ten twenty four. 14 minutes ago, you've been waiting so patiently. I apologize, my good friend. We're just talking WrestleMania night one. What can you do about it? But Will Chisholm came in. And I'm coming to ask a question. I'm fucking sick of Party, drink tequila, 
Yeah, yeah, this show's better than your average wrestling show. And you know that. Yeah, and we're not yeah, shoving yeah. roof and shirt. <laughs> Will Chisholm said, dude, I got five bucks and I want to just ask you guys a question. Um, oh. And we just appreciate that so much here at PWT, man. Truly, because we've been grinding out like lots of content lately and we, we just surpassed that like threshold and that view threshold airline knows dude we're above 2k the day before our anniversary we're almost at 500 on the one channel we got it's fucking 10 k views on videos 2k views on videos 5k views 4k 3k we're, and it's the top pod listeners and people like will chisholm who come down and say i have five dollars i want to ask a question i want to i want to see what's up with you uh, um I'm sniffling and snorting, guys. I am definitely not uh, conning it. <laughs> I'm not tuning in. I it. definitely but find myself too old to be partaking in those type of endeavors anymore. Maybe maybe if I go to Vegas here or there. Maybe if WrestleMania's in Vegas next year. But as far as right <laughs> now, we're just I'm just sniffly. It is the weather's changing here where I'm at, and uh, I got a little allergies. But Will Chisholm threw five dollars down and said, I'm sorry, I have to do it. Did you see the AEW fans mad at Julia and Rossi at the NXT stand and deliver? Will Chisholm, yeah, we absolutely did see that. We reacted to it on PWT podcast episode, I think 57, which is coming out Monday morning. Um, yeah, we actually uh, reacted it's be a to the whole day of PWT before earlier today. Raw, yeah, before the Raw after Mania. Um, I'm going to upload it all then just because I'm under the weather. It would have already been uploaded this morning before standard delivery. But I was just like, dude, I'm already doing live shows. Like, there should be like over 100 people in here. But we're okay. If there was four of you in here, we'd be rocking with you. But just, you know, we're going up against so many other people doing reaction shits, and that's fine. We're grinding and it your up. boy. Yeah, with great people. Your boys like on X. Right. And so, um, oh, yeah, I, right. I don't even know. I don't even know what hair let's talk about. But, um, no, but, your boy, your best friend. We'll You're give obsessed. you our tip. Yeah, <laughs> I think Hairline's more obsessed than I am. He keeps bringing it the fuck no. up. No, no, no. The first, <laughs> this is you. you have, I've seen your basement. Oh, I got, you got, a, I got a subscription. Uh, Kyle Fletcher. Yeah, he said he wants uh, five stars in America. There's not many. Um, so oh, no. but we see that. Yeah, yeah dude. Kyle saw, Fletcher, the goof for sure. <laughs> we we saw it. Sorry, Will Chisholm. We'll answer your question. We saw it. We reacted. Here's our thoughts. Hairline, he paid us five bucks. We got to tell him his, our, our thoughts. So I we played the clip. We thought it was hilarious. Julia was absorbing it in. She's like, holy shit, I'm in front of a crowd of 19,000 or 16,000 or 17, 18, whatever the number was. Who gives a fuck? Sold out, big ass building. And she definitely made the right choice. And there's going to be a Tony Khan meltdown eventually. And especially when you look at the fact that Tony Khan himself attacked Rossi Ogawa. The fans attacked William Regal. And the fans attacked Julia. So you have to think that he's taking it personally, right? Like he took route. He was calling Rousey like a fed, like a fed infiltrator, or bye bye fed, whatever. And then just all that shit. Ju like Julia, they were calling her unsafe and dangerous with Willow they're trying to bury her. William Regal, they're calling him a traitor for wanting to go work with his son. Who is just at GWC Blood uh, uh, GCW Bloodsport? Part of me, which we just covered as well. And so, uh, what do I think? I think fuck them. That's what. <laughs> that's what I think. Or did I see them? <laughs> yes, I saw them. Fuck those clowns. Fuck them. She made the right call. WWE did more with her than AEW would have. AEW was calling Mariah May a generational talent, and she's doing Tony Storm's WWE gimmick and jobbing to people on Collision. So that, what would they have done with Julia? She'd have been an ROH fighting Athena or some shit. And I love Athena. Call her up. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. So Julia, and you could tell Julia looking at the upper deck, she looked all around that arena, didn't even look at the camera. And she was just absorbing that. She was like, wow. And she got such an ovation. 40 of you in here. Make sure you hit the like. We need at least 30 likes. Hairline, your thoughts on what... Um, Will Will Chisholm Will Chisholm has to ask us. Oh, man, so like, it's just like Tony's melting down. He's losing all his fucking 
his momentum he's built over the past three to four years. And it's just like he's burning through his dad, his daddy's money, most of all, man. But yeah, like I, I thought he fucking loved Joshi wrestling and yada yada yada. And here's here he is dif- disrespecting one of the the biggest like providers of this. Yeah, like cultivators of that talent. Right. You know, yeah. And then what are they gonna do? Hate on what are you gonna hate on Julia versus whoever the fuck you know what i mean like what are you gonna hate on that right you a know? quick example it just on expose you it just expose you bad. no no no, hairline it's not your bad you go ahead my friend like a metaphor or an example here it's like when one of the new school trap rappers is hating on like old school <laughs> rappers like <laughs> Plan or fucking Nas or something like that you know and it's all like right. god damn it you got you just like you don't even know your history but it's the same <laughs> thing like with tony khan there because you know Tony Khan knows every little thing about this guy. He can tell you where he was born, who he went to high school with, yada, yada, yada. Right, and Tony's just mad that he wouldn't stooge for him. Tony just doesn't right. like when people don't stooge for him. It's become obvious based on who gets jobs. and I think that's why a lot of people flock to PWT Podcast Hairline, because it's like... We'll we'll bury the fucking dude. I went off on WWE earlier today, so I think that's why people flock to us because it's like, yeah, would I love a job with WWE? Sure, I'd even take a job with AW. Honest to God, <laughs> I'd do it. Like it. Uh, I don't know if I'd shill anything though. I wouldn't. I just couldn't shill anything. That's my own. You know, hairline. You know, hairline knows what I'm saying. We're we're fucking. We're very like. Uh, you know, like if we get ads and shit, we might make a whole new show because it's yeah. Anyways, we're gonna move along here on WrestleMania card. Thank you, John Kism or Will Kism for the <laughs> whatever your name is. We love you uh, for the super chat. Um, the Rock versus Roman Reigns, uh, the Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Part of me was the main event of the evening. I'm super sick, guys. My word. Um, I drank a bunch of Dayquil, but I am fucking... Oh, but I've been drinking, too. That's why I'm savage. So, anyways, uh, I had my ones up in the air. I'm bloodline all day. I love Cody Rhodes, but... I want Roman to win the fucking belt, and I want him to go belt versus people's belt um, next year at Mania. That's my fucking... <laughs> so, you guys are mad at me? But we all know who is going to win this because Cody's probably going to win tomorrow. I didn't put money on the on this match because it was too obvious, the outcome. If you did a parlay of every match that was the obvious outcome, you'd make like $11. And it's just not worth it. So um, I parlayed Jimmy and Becky, and I knew both of them were going to lose. But they both ended up losing, and then I lost my money. But that's okay because we're just having fun, right? It's uh, You live one time. Right. So- threw something down i could have made a real because here's the thing they were the biggest dogs other than um kevin owens i think is like the biggest dog of the whole mania weekend tomorrow at like a six to one underdog or something alt jake says everyone is a generational talent every match is a dream match every card is one of the best we've ever had it's great soda waters yeah (laughs) hairline how do you feel about this though everyone's doing it's great and like doing tony khan is mickey mouse we invented that so how do you feel about everyone's doing that shit now we were like are you kidding me and then and then everyone's doing the it's great even Cornette started ringing the bell and that's what alt jake is insinuating here and we're not hating on you Alt jake but even Cornette started ringing the bell but we were the first without question to do it's great like we got the memes made we got memes made of the shit you know like we yeah yeah so what do you think about everyone like everyone's doing our shit dude like i mean it's flattering it's flattering you know so like at work shoot shoot work here brother at my work at my work we get multiple people in the kitchen doing the voice and we call it the tonyverse <laughs> yeah. it's the tonyverse i'm eternal yeah, yeah. My wife asked me, she goes, when you go, it's great. What is that? And I go, that's Tony Khan. <laughs> that's Tony Khan. 
And she just goes, okay. She just gets it immediately. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So the Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, man. Where do we start? So just, they did like the Hogan, Rock, look both ways, stare down, trying to get the crowd reaction. They tied up. I, I X'd out. I tweeted out at Pro Wrestle Times. I said, yo, The Rock is uh, Hollywood Hogan in this match. Like, he was just tie up, throwing the other guy, bullying him in the corner, throwing strikes. He didn't do anything. But then when The, but then when the Rock did have to sell, he was selling his ass off, man. Like, his facials and shit right. were just ridiculously good. Like, Hollywood level... Um just look at him compared to even like Cody, who's like a premier, you know, premier oh, professional cool. wrestler. Yeah. The rock was just get put, just putting everyone over. And, uh, I had a bunch of people watching with me and someone says, Oh, look, his trunks are, doesn't the rock normally wear gold or blue, but it was red. And I go, yeah, it's the bloodline. They're the bloodline. You know what I mean? So it was rock was wearing bloodline red, um, like trim. Right. He came out with those crazy ass bell bottoms. Uh, the Rock hijacked the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony. He hijacked Muhammad Ali's induction and awarded himself sort of the People's Championship belt, the video game belt that a lot of people haven't uh, or wish it never was appeared on TV, but they made it for The Rock back in the day. So. He carries that belt out, and they're doing an angle during this match where, or like after the match, they go to give Rollins his belt, and The Rock kicks it out of the ring, and he goes, I told you, Seth, I'm going to make that title disappear. He was saying that weeks ago, and I'm telling y'all, we're getting Rock versus Seth. We're getting Rock versus Cody. We're getting Rock versus Roman. We're getting Rock versus all these people, right? Like I, I said it so long ago, and motherfuckers are like, we're not getting Rock versus Seth. Are you... Are you sure about that? Hey, you know that John Cena meme? Are you sure about that? You know, like, I yeah. Think, uh, that we're not going to get that. Uh, yeah, man. like, don't worry. We got Dave coming up, too. I'm just sick. My flow's a little off, but we're we're coming together here. Um, PWC Live Show, what's up? <laughs> After post-WrestleMania, let's go. But, but dude, oh, yeah, man. there's match... 37 people here right now. Exactly. I, I thought that... Um, Mama Rhodes would get more involved. I thought Brandy Rhodes would be sitting there, but it was like Mama Rhodes with Brandy Rhodes, Rhodes' dad. Well, that's chill, yeah. but it was weird. But he just beat cancer, so shout out fucking <laughs> shout out Papa Brandy Rhodes for beating fucking cancer because that's G shit. But like, you know, I thought there'd be like The Rock, like cry on this belt and blood. But tomorrow, so the finish was brilliant. A spear. It was like a Superman punch, a spear, and then Rock hits the rock bottom, then the people's elbow. So tomorrow, I think we're it's bloodline rules, right? No DQ. I think right. we'll bloody up Cody, hold his head in front of his mom, and that's where we'll get all the tears and the blood shed on the belt. But I X'd out. I said, you know what, man? In the middle of the match, they go outside the ring, and The Rock says, hey, ref, fuck the countouts. If you count them out, I'll fire you. I'm on the TKO board. Da, da, da. Okay, great, but so this match is bloodline rules too? You know what I mean? Like, well, what, So this match is just bloodline rules? What the fuck? You know what I mean? It, it, there's no point to even... You just lost the whole plot of what the tomorrow's supposed to be. This I match fire the goddamn ref. <laughs> like, no, I just think that was a bad call on like The Rock and Triple H and all them. You can't just go, oh yeah, like The Rock's pulling the ref out of the ring. The ref's just working with The Rock. If I was Cody and Seth, I'd just walk out and go fuck it. Right. I just walk out. We're already taking bloodline rules. That's like the psychology earlier in the show when Grayson Waller won the SmackDown title. He got power bombed through the ladder right after, right? Did he come back in the match trying to win the Raw belt? No, Theory did. But he didn't get powerbombed through a lot. 
Waller was like, yo, I just won the SmackDown tag belt. Fuck the rest of this match. You know, I'm not getting, I just got power bump yeah, through yeah. a ladder. I'm good, bro. Like, we just won tag. I don't care about those other belts. So, excuse me, guys. I can't wait for that, man. That shit's going to be great. I told you, yeah, bro. It's going to be great every week. But I'm very sick, guys, oh, yeah. if you're just tuning in. Yeah, I'm very, I'm fucking so head cold right now. But, um, but yeah, so I probably spread it to so many people too. I had so many people come on. Oh my god! So um, <laughs> I'm so. Oh yeah, were you uh, guys smoking the dope? Yeah, we were. We were passing it. Yeah, big smoke, blood, if you know what I'm saying. But but I definitely um I just thought it was silly. Like, what's the point of tomorrow then? If this can just be overridden, like, so tomorrow could have just been overridden by the rock. He could have just said, nah, it's my rules. <laughs> so it, ju- it just sort of undermined the whole purpose now. of what it, right. It was, it was your thoughts. That's my thoughts on it, but a great match overall. Like I was, I was just sucked in the whole time as far as like everyone's selling great. Everybody's, uh, the crowd was really into it. I was into it. A lot of people are like, the crowd's dead. It's like, no, dude, they're in, they're outside. So the noise just gets sucked out the top of that bitch. There's no roof. But even for them being outside, the crowd sounded very loud, I felt, for the whole card. They were really in sync with chants and things like that. Even, But sorry, Hairline, your thoughts on this main event here? Oh, yeah, I thought it was great. But um, yeah, man. yeah, go into it, bro. Yeah, that's your thoughts. It was great. Let's look at what this fucking mark ranked it a B minus. Uh, so you give me your thoughts and tell me if it's a B minus. How about that? No, no, it was great. It was perfect. The college said sting off. Um, but yeah, man. Anyways, so the rock here. Let's start with the rock. Well, God mode. The final boss. Fucking. I'm looking for a, a final boss type beat. You know what I'm saying? That kind of shit. Dog. Bro, um, that entrance was fucking fire. Yeah, hell yeah, it was, dude. Everyone's entrance here was fire. What the fuck was Seth Rollins wearing? I don't know. You know that I mean? was like, y'all remember Jillian Hall when she had that shit growing on her face? That's like Seth Rollins had some shit growing out of his outfit. <laughs> hairline so hairline are you with me we lost hairline guys oh no he's gonna tune back in in like five seconds so we're gonna move along and then that was the end of the card so we're gonna move along into the press conference i'm gonna hit play when hairline gets back he's gonna give me his thoughts on the main event so make sure you hit that like button while we're here right now um, there's 38 of you watching. We've had like 45 of you watching. We're at 21 likes. Can we get to 25 or 30 likes, please? And Hairline will rejoin us, I assure you. See, he just dipped out. He'll be right back. And when he's right back, he'll give you his thoughts on the main event. In the meantime, please get us to like 30 uh, 30 likes, 35 likes, please. I'm very sick. Um, and I know I've said it a million times, but it is the live show. And I just appreciate you all for rocking with us. We're gonna keep this thing going. We're gonna we're gonna watch the the uh, press conference. So I hope you guys are sticking around. If you already watched the press conference, sweet. I I bet a bunch of you already did. Um, but yeah, we're. I didn't even know they were doing one. So I would have probably waited till after. I I don't even know. Just Saturday nights are our nights. We have Thunderbolt Patterson in the chat, guys. He says, give it a 3.5, my brother. Thunderbolt Patterson uh, gave the most epic fucking speech ever at the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. So that's hilarious. Someone made a whole ass account. I was like, yo, he red-pilled the whole WWE universe, and I was there for the sermon. I absolutely was. Um, Go with God, guys. Don't be a simp. Um, anyways, <laughs> Hairline, thank you for coming back to the show. Um, your thoughts back on like Raquel. Don't worry, bro. We we already know the drill. I like had it timed out perfectly, and we I was just shooting the shit with the chat. And yeah, so you're back. Uh, Hairline's thoughts on the main events right here, though. Thirty likes, hopefully. Thirty likes, hopefully. Thirty likes, hopefully. 30 likes, or, or, or I'm going to sing, guys. Twenty. There's 37 people watching, 25 likes, or I'm going to sing. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing. Yeah, anyways. just keep singing until we hit a whatever number you want. What do you want me to sing, bro? Um, wrestling entrances. Well, which one? Whoa, uh, my father said. Uh, what what is hers yeah, like? Uh, ba 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 ba. This is my brutality. Oh yeah, do Jericho. Yeah, do this Jericho. So you're Jericho. He's gonna sing like Jericho till we get to the numbers we need. I eat, sleep, breathe, chum out, reggae in my sleep. Yeah, I eat, sleep. So people are tuning out of the show, dude, in droves. Yeah, sorry guys. We <laughs> like the video. I want you to do AJ Styles. They don't want none. They don't want none. <laughs> Must do be scared of me. None. They don't want none. They don't want none. They must be scared because I'll hit them with a fucking tennis racket because they don't want none. Bunch <laughs> of southern boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Holy shit. Ridiculous. This is the most ridiculous show, dude. I love it so much. You guys are tuning back in. Yeah. 25 likes. You motherfuckers. Get us the 30. I love you so much. Mwah. Okay. Hairline, your thoughts on the main event. That's what the people came to came to listen to. Yeah, so I gave my thoughts on The Rock and Seth and pretty much every, everyone. Um, I, I was talking, I, so I was going on about Cody here um, and his mom and whatnot. But so night two, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll get more of this Cody Rhodes and his mom stuff. So, right? Like, you, yeah, we're like going to get The Rock. Like, we're going to get. We're going to get her like crying on the belt and, and we're going to get Cody right. blood tomorrow. Cody's going to bleed and it's bloodline rules and the rock's going to come down. And this is what people are saying hairline. Now I don't want to even say it because I feel like we're all jinxing it, but can I, can I say it? Cause we pointed it yeah, out I'm on the it. show with Paul. Excuse me. Guys. We put it out on problem. the show. I've been drinking cervezas and tequila. So we point, <laughs> we pointed it out on the show with Paul Nolan, who's in Argentina drinking fucking cervezas right now, dude. Um when The Rock was beating Cody up, that production truck in the back was lit awfully well. You and I have both done film hairline. You know that that shit was lit pretty well. And it was a picture of Cena and Austin on the back as The Rock was whipping Cody. Do you think that John Cena and Austin show up in the Bloodline Rules match to even the odds and help Cody Rhodes get the win and beat Roman finally? I don't know. That'd be kind of a trip. That would be awesome. And I think this too, Roman versus Rock for the People's Championship next year, the head of the Bloodline Championship, the people, that could be crazy, dude. What do you think about that? Next year's Mania, Roman and Rock. We lost hairline again. Okay, we're live. Fuck it. We'll do it live. So, yeah, me personally, I just think we have all of these matches between these four coming up. Let's see what they have to. Is this just a promo package or what? Yeah. It's just the promo package, guys. Yeah. But ultimately, um, a good night one night two is going to be crazy to me it's crazy we even have a night two like this could have just been wrestlemania i would have been i would have been stoked but it's obviously booked yeah. with a with a this night this is two. one of the best wrestlemanias in years for sure right and it's obviously booked with a night two in mind you know what i mean um so the live streams going and going and going and going but you guys, before we get into the press scrum, do you guys want a Dave Meltzer dumb moment of the week? Oh, yeah. So I called out the dirt sheets earlier. I said, yo, Asuka wasn't hurt like they're saying, and fucking Jade ain't going to be all protected. She's going to be a big part of the match. Dirt sheets were wrong. Dirt sheets in the mud, as usual. And here is Dave Meltzer via WrestleTalk TV. Hairline, what do you think about WrestleTalk TV? Which one are these guys? Are they the, the guys with the belt? 
it's wrestle talk and cultaholic and what culture that are the uk guys what do you think about wrestle talk ollie davis and uh jack or, i think uh, they, all of them could fuck off besides simon is where i'm at okay so um grayson waller seemingly responds to dave Meltzer reporting that there's going to be a meeting with wwe about potentially removing grayson waller and austin theory from the wrestlemania tag ladder match Meltzer said, quote, by the way, um, even though Theory and Waller won, um, it's like it's um it's like um it's, oh, it's like um it's like um Batman. Batman. It's like um it is not oh. necessarily that they're going to be in the match. They might be. There is a meeting upcoming where they will make a decision on that. Um so um we said it a million times on the show, guys. So Meltzer said that, by the way, Theory and Waller aren't even supposed to be in this fucking match. There's going to be a meeting oh. if they're actually in the match. They won oh. the SmackDown Tag fucking champion. Dummy. Yeah. So fucking we've dang. told you guys this. Whoever's telling Meltzer shit is lying to him. And I know that. And he knows that I know that. And that he knows that I know that he knows that he knows that he gets fed fake shit by the way guys and he knows that I know that he knows that and that's why I'm blocked that's why he doesn't fuck with me because he knows that I know that he knows that I'm telling you that right now and he goes on I think he goes on to say so people go I just remember you said that I didn't read that issue lol but hey if you corrected yourself it's all good so this guy's even trying to be nice and he's and he and he said to him, "What do you mean, like Waller and fucking Theory ended up winning the tag belts? You said they weren't even going to be in the match." And then and then Dave goes, "Wasn't a mistake. Was the internal run sheet for the show on three twenty eight listed matches order and run times for every match?" And then this guy said, "Wait, I thought you reported they won't be in the match." And Dave goes, "Huh? I reported the lineup as of three twenty-eight and explained it multiple times during the week. What did the issue say after the final meeting?" So Dave gets by. So what Dave thinks is that you're all so dumb. What Dave thinks and is poor. you're all, you're all so dumb and poor that he can say things on Monday and then at. I just ma I just laugh at this. I can't even word it because it's so fucking stupid, hairline. It makes me mad. Like I actually get upset because it's so stupid. But it's just like okay. it's hard to understand. I get like it, I need you to it? break down what he's saying because just the tweet itself is like hard to fucking decrypt. Listen, he just he so Dave thinks that as the wrestling observer and the wrestling news he thinks that he can come to people and go oh on tuesday night their plans are this and then the and then it doesn't work out that way and he goes well on tuesday night that was their plans but on actual wrestlemania that's not their plans do you know what i mean like he thinks he can go oh well on wednesday that's what they said but on thursday they changed their mind and that's the di like it's just think, such uh, it's just such know. bullshit it's just fucking yeah batman dick grayson it's just such like it's just such buffoonery and like people give him money like guys if you're gonna give anyone 12.99 give it to pwt because we won't lie to you everything i tell you is fucking right I told you Sammy Zayn was gonna win. Why the fuck did I know that? Come on, guys. Like, shut the fuck up. What are we doing here? Like, like, come on, man. And Dave, and Dave, it's like, dude, look at this. I don't know, dude. If you give this guy money, I just feel so bad for you. And like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't think any of our listeners do, but it's just ridiculous. Like Dave thinks that, yeah, uh, just imagine. Well, that is what the news does, man. He just copies it from the news. It's just silliness. And yeah, we're already mind boggled. Everyone knows Dave Meltzer. Dumb moment of the week is the staple segment of PWT. And it's going to stay that way because he stays dumb. So hairline, we uh, have the uh, we have the post show press scrum. Byron Saxton's on the screen. 
and hopefully WWE doesn't pull us down. We're going to see what he has to say. We're actually going to minimize that. And we're Social media platforms out there. We thank you for staying up late with us. As Good well as our who are here this evening. One or two. Listeners, listeners, we're doing this so we don't get pulled down. Yeah, just so everyone knows. Like, we're doing this so we don't get pulled down. You guys already know, but we have to pause a bunch. There's going to be people in the clips. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we got it, bro. That's what we have to do. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go through this. We're going to. Of course, it with the title boss, The Rock, teaming up with Roman Reigns to take on the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and Seth freaking Rollins. Are with. So The Rock, as you guys can see. Boom. He's gonna he's about to hit a rock bottom. And he does. Spoilers. <laughs> Just seen the closing moments he hits of that, that shit. match as the rock would deliver an emphatic rock bottom. And then he peoples elbows his ass. And look at the prime logo. Not obnoxious at all. Hey hairline. And they kept the same mat the whole card. So in yeah, WWE, no, I, I can't wait for the, the Woo Energy Drink logo in the AEW. Yeah, ring. and and in and in Vince, Mc, in Vince McMahon's WWE, they would change the. There would be like four or five fucking uh, canvases laid down, and then at commercial breaks, they'd rip one canvas down. That's what they would do. If you've ever been to a TV. They didn't do that for WrestleMania. There's one Prime logo, and it's one logo the whole time. It's one canvas, pardon me, the whole time, which is just tremendous. To the American Nightmare, and that would be only a precursor to the end, as The Rock has made a career from this maneuver right here. That's crazy. The throat slit. WWE Universe. The throat slit hairline. What'd you think about that? Then the ones up. The throat slit, then the ones up. Bloodline. Oh, yeah, pretty savage. The one displayed for the bloodline. And, well, a not so flat first guest. She was very. The line, line victorious in our main event of WrestleMania 40, which means we all know the stipulation. Tomorrow night, WrestleMania Sunday. Bloodline rules, baby. Okay, here is uh, Rhea Ripley comes out. Hi. I'm a Special Olympics athlete and WrestleMania 40's community correspondent. Here's my question for you. How does it feel to retain that title and still be the best nightmare of all time? <laughs> Hairline, your thoughts on that question? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I think he's a goddamn mark. And we need to fucking you. start filtering these questions before they ask him. I'm just fucking with you, dude. Here we go. It feels bloody fantastic, to say the least. <laughs> Look, I, I went out there with one of the best in this federation. Grand Mall, the largest WrestleMania there is. Um, it's very, very special. And not only that, but to have Motionless and White be there too. Everything sort of came together. Hairline, your thoughts on Motionless and White? Oh, why are you pausing it? Oh, why are you pausing the, the video? Phil? Oh, yes. You know, I'm, not, I'm going to hit the dislike button because you keep pausing it every 10 seconds. <laughs> Just right. Emotion, um, emotionless and white, your thoughts? Not really for me, but as a musician, you know, like they're talented. They're just not like I. They're not something I would bump or vibe to, you know. But what do you think it's about cool that Rhea Ripley got her little mark? Moment. Huh? What do you think about when people tattoo their whole body black? What do you think about that? <laughs> like, um. The girl on Bloodsport last night. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> like the guy in Motion oh, yeah. and White. 
Um, <laughs> don't they usually do that to like cover something? Right? Because if they're just doing it to do it, it's pretty okay. fucking dumb. But I know it's supposed to. Okay, hold on. My bad, you guys. Tattoos are supposed to be self expression. So as long as it means something to you, you know, but I don't know. Phil Marks is dying over here. Sorry, guys. Uh, oh, yeah, no, Phil Marks, give him a Phoenix down. He'll be, he'll be okay. Sick with a cold, smoking weed, drinking tequila. Yeah, what? What? How about uh, Pat McAfee? <laughs> And Michael Cole on commentary with Corey Graves, phenomenal. Amazing. Dude, and then like they were making jokes about like uh Michael Cole is making jokes about Wheatley vodka. Oh, I have a drink or two or a bottle. Like and then, and then McAfee's going, What, what? You know? Like that's McAfee was-, was so good, bro. <laughs> and I proved once again that mommy is always on top. Hi, Rhea. Cameron Hawkins from The Ringer. Um, we had a conversation back in January about mm-hmm. the authenticity that you've been presenting with your character. I think we got to see a lot more of that tonight, especially. Can you just talk about the creative freedom you've been given and how that's really helped your career to date? Yeah. Every time I step out there in front of everyone and even doing things um, away from the crowd as well, I feel like I get to be the genuine person that I am. Obviously. It's a it's a little bit revved up because some of the things I I do I would get arrested for in everyday life. Stink face. But oh, yeah. <laughs> on the other hand, it's it's just an organic version of me. It's it's how I would react to things. It's what I would say to things. It's how I would feel emotionally to the things that are happening around me. And I've had a lot of creative freedom with that. I get to be myself. I get to be genuine. I get to go out there and you know, be the badass that you all love, be the mommy that you all love, but also show that side of me where I do let you see that little glimpse into my life where I am excited genuinely (laughs) about something that's happening in my life. Like you saw tonight with Motionless and White, me and Chris, they're screaming at each other. It was a great entrance. It was great. Uh, That's that's a life moment right there that's something that i've absolutely dreamt of my entire life i've loved that band since high school and i'm so privileged that they got to come here and be a part of this massive moment for me so for me i get a lot of freedom but i feel like that works because did she just say that she knew them in her high school she's been listening to them since high school oh sorry i thought she said she knew them i was i was having a i i smoked some herbs in minecraft and i fucking I lost my oh, shit. Yeah. Well, as cold I, as it is, and I shouldn't have even did that. But I was like, I gotta just smoke a little something, you know. Well, I just got done Resident Evil Four and some bong hits, so I feel you. Well, sounds like we're on the same page. I'm blowing my nose over here. I'm sick as a dog. You fucking yeah, PW2 misters, you work me like a fucking dog, man. You guys work me like a dog. Here we go. Did you guys see? the true person that I am. And that's what makes it easier to connect with. I want to connect with you, mommy. Uh, She's dumb fine. Does this cement the end of the four horsewomen era in WWE for women's wrestling? Luckiest cuck on earth. (laughs) You know, the four horsewomen era, it will live on forever. With her extensions, she's fine as fuck here. They accomplished so much. They took the women's division to heights that... Ah, uh, more people watching Sean Ross Sapp than us. We could have only... Differences, I'm fucked up, and I'll tell you, I won't lie about it. <laughs> dreamt of. They've done so much for You're the business. Best. And I have all the respect for every single one of them. I feel like the way that I've been going WrestleMania after WrestleMania, finally knocking off the horsewoman and same as Bianca Belair, she's been doing the same. We've been proving that there is a shift coming and these new women, they are taking over and we're showing out. We're trying to take it to higher heights that it has been taken to. Uh, Obviously. We're trying to take it to higher heights that it has been taken to. All right. (laughs) All right, good answer. Four horsewomen, they're amazing at what we do. And we are- <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to be a hitter. It's like, you know what I'm saying? All right. 
want them to leave, but they're going to have to move over because they're uh, filming this. Um, do you notice that? Because people started saying hairline, they're like, yo, the media scrums, even CM Punk, he said at Ariel Helwani's podcast, he's like, the media scrums are fucking cringy. So how WWE's filming it, it's not like that old media scrum. They're filming it like it's guerrilla style, like uh, the MMA junkets, like the MMA. You'll, if you yeah, go on like, you like MMA. MMA yeah, exactly. If you go on like uh, the MacLife.com, they're just in the guerrilla scrum recording their shit for their channel. That's for the press, you know? So it's it's they're trying to make it feel like that, which I... <laughs> <laughs> excuse me i appreciate it but it's uh it's different i appreciate it for sure hopefully more of this in the future the slammies are tomorrow though or some shit during raw or what i don't want to miss them uh we're taking over at the same time uh, excuse me ooh, 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 ooh. better drink some tequila better drink some tequila to get rid of that cough I'm drinking blue. Oh, no, actually, I, I like White Claw and Red Bull and uh, hang out with uh, Orange Cassidy and we book Jay White. That's awesome. That's great. Oh, actually, I only drink soda waters. Um, I've never like, had a soda water ever. How, how do you feel people doing our shit? That's when you know you made it, right? Like, the motherfuckers doing your shit. Is that weird for me to say that? But people are doing our shit, like, fully. You know? My coworker sent me a video of um, Taz's voice turned, like, they pitch shifted it up. And they yeah. said, Con- Tony Khan doing commentary. And I oh was all like, God. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, it's crazy. And so oh, yeah. it's great. When Cornette started doing it, like, but at least Cornette did it originally, rings the bell. And that's like we didn't think of doing like a da da. We just go, it's great. Like he says, it's great. And you go, it's so, great. So hold on. Yeah. Let, let's talk about it for a second. How yeah, it originated. Like that's our bit. That's our fucking bit. Like, let's be real about that. You know? Yeah. So where where it truly came from is where we would talk about Sammy talking to to Tony. You know what I'm saying? Where he started complaining. Sammy Guevara. About, uh, yeah. It's not talking well, to Tony yeah. on the paper. Oh, then I gave oh, you yeah. more time. Because he got all high pitched during that rebuttal. It's, and that's really where it like started taking a life of its own. It, oh, it's no, I gave you more time. Yeah, it's the 10 minutes of Tony Khan video because Brian Danielson, that's where he says to Brian Danielson, no, I gave you more time. And that's where he goes to San Guevara. And... Oh, if you flip it up here and uh, if you over here in you know, trios, and I think this is right over here. I know. And, and then, like, all the soda waters, like, like we came up with the fucking because later them. people are gonna start going, like, um, I oh, puke. Like, remember, she's like, oh, I'm so, like, Britt Baker's like, I'm so excited. I could, um, I'm gonna puke. Let's do oh, it. Yeah, let's do it. I didn't, let's I didn't do it. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, and Sammy's taking him into the office. He goes, "Oh yeah, I didn't eat today." Or Sammy's like, "Yeah, no, it's awesome. I'm so excited." And then Tony goes, "Like me too. I didn't eat today." It's like, uh, <laughs> and then yeah, you guys, off, and there's like 800 empty soda bottles. And you're like, yeah, no, we, so we paused that clip and we counted them. There's eight empty soda waters, and they're not just like sitting there. They're scattered all across the room. Mm-hmm. And I, but that shit's funny. And I swear we invented that because people, people, every, oh, oh yeah, Tony Khan like Mickey Mouse. Oh, that's our bit. We developed that. A lot of too, they'll be like, who cares who came up with it for we? Not even like we do, but it's just like it's hilarious that we started that here in PWT, and that's like spread around. Like that's a thing in the community oh, yeah. now. Yeah, it's hilarious. Here's more of the press conference, though. So yeah, yeah now that we're done putting ourselves over. Yeah, we're Wait, putting ourselves over. Tony, all drunk. For your, uh, dirty drunk dom long. Talk, dude. Uh, so I'm gonna take a tequila shot. What? Yeah. Uh, I'm and, drinking and a blue Damien moon. What? Lost. Taking some bong hits in Minecraft. What? Um, Get a cerveza. What? Oh, like the, like uh, another smoke damn. bong what? hits, but I take little pipe hits or light a joint or a blunt. Yeah, what? Yeah, a little bit of tobacco too. What? I don't smoke cigarettes, but I, sometimes I like a blunt. What? 
Sometimes I like a beer. Stella Artois. What? Maybe R2. What? <laughs> Maybe D2. What? Maybe D3. What? Doug, that fucking you putting tobacco in your blunt is just your hood side coming out. You can't help yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's just my Indian shit, shit, bro. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. This is what it is. Give us like us. They know ourselves. It sucks. We really want that to be the moment for the judgment day where we solidify ourselves as the main threat here within the WWE. I'm always going to be proud of it. So of course they have either start to carry the weight of the underlings still. What do what do you make of all that? What do you think about judgment day heading in the future? Do you think they're gonna collapse the way that I see them collapsing soon? Or is hairline with us? Who do you think you are saying they're gonna collapse? Well, everybody was like, this is the collapse of the blood line, or uh, pardon me, of the Judgment Day. But with both of their title matches on the same night, you had to figure it, it wouldn't be. Or it would be or it wouldn't be. But once Mommy retained match one, you're like, well, it can't be a collapse. So even if they lose in the tag match, you know, this is tag. yellow journalism at its finest with you <laughs> saying they're going to break. No, the Judgment Day is eternal. I hate to break this to you. What do you think? Judgment Day when they come out and throw tea now and shit that be um... I think they're the still the top heels, you know, on Monday Night Raw. Bullet Club Purple, right? Like they're Bullet Club Judgment Day, right? Like yeah, throw Bullet Club Judgment Day for sure. Yeah, exactly. Tonight they were yeah. Tonight they were Bullet Club Pink. Did you notice yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. And how cool was yeah, like Damien's yeah. mask? He looked like a fucking predator coming out and shit. That was dope. Yeah, so I I I tweeted this out or X'd it out. I thought Finn Balor looked like as if like the villain from the Strangers. Hairline, what's your what, hairline? What's your X handle, bro? Because I love you're my brother, bro. At hairline nine seven uh, four uh, eight four new like hairline what? six nine two five seven nine eight six five nine two hundred eight nine yeah two, so five. can you fix that what can we do about that do we gotta like get, how do we get you a new a new handle i don't know how to fucking fix it i you think guys, you guys we're looking for a moderator we're looking for someone who shit for 50 minutes or whatever <laughs> Yeah, no, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. We're just, I'm just fucking with you guys. And look at this wrestling gets trail 30. Only 800 people. Let's get these views up on Grapple Vision. We're going to stop it. I've never seen it yet. So, but anyways. La Fight. Damien and Finn were in there with many other tag teams. Don't blame her. Made sure to sit across the ring from after the. Payback point, but for now, I'm having to see what the future holds. Hairline, do you think they retire sooner or later, or do you think she's like what? No, I don't think she's gonna retire soon. Well, she lost here. What do you think's next for Becky? Oh, in a mid program with a rematch at Backlash. What do you think? I don't think Becky needs a title, bro. Um, who does she feud with? Wait, wait, stop, you know, stop, stop. wait, wait. Who does she feud without a title right now? Um, Tiffany Stratton. Ah, uh, okay. Now, but isn't Stratton on SmackDown? See, you just won me over. But Becky's Raw and Stratton's on SmackDown. Do you just take a and split or draft her over? Do you a draft? That's exactly it. Chatton's on SmackDown, Becky on Raw. So not her, dude. Who? You want to X Files me? Yes. Oh, do I want to X Files? That's what the people tuned in for. We're gonna read. Oh my goodness, guys. So sorry, John JID. Before I fucking X Files you, hairline. John JID with a five dollar. 
Yeah, fuck yeah, this guy. Shout out to John G. 999. With a five dollar super chat and a five inch Wiener. Let's get it. Yeah, that's that's a profile. We talk about wieners and dinks. And Garcia wiggling his dink. John JID, what do you think about Garcia wiggling his dink? Do you like that? Is that your kind of sports-based wrestling? John JID has five dollars and he wants to ask us something or say something that he feels is worthy to be on the show and on the screen. And I'm sorry I didn't get to it until when I got to it one minute ago, though. So actually, you didn't wait too long. But love show as always. Thank you for drunk. So you're. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, thank you. But we're drunk, dude. This is just this is what me and Hairline DM each other. Um Mania was awesome. Really like the Lucha match. Oh good, good. The six over tag in the bed was insane. I agree. Um Rock's entrance was iconic. Rock's entrance, we gotta queued up. We're gonna kind of play on on JID. Hairline, what do you think JID and what he has to say? So the loot match he really liked. We kind of said it was the shits. Not the shits, but we were just like, it was lower on the, the six-woman tag. Hairline kind of went in on as well, but I really put it over. And the main event was insane. Yeah, I agree. I was gripped, like hooked every minute. Anybody who's going to say that's, oh, no, it's lazy. It's paced wrestling. Haha. <laughs> Hairline, what do you think about what John J.D. has to say? I thought it was one of the more solid like I said, one of the more solid WrestleManias in like over a decade here, bud. Um, I do. But, but yeah, man, obviously, like like I was saying, there was moments where Jade was a little green. Um, the Lucha match was good. You know, for us originally thinking we were going to get the LWO big Lucha Warfare match, it just suddenly turned into a tag match. So that was a good surprise. Why wasn't it just like 5v5? That's great, like. They all start doing that. Oh, that we, we don't got time for that. I'm sorry. Yeah. So go ahead, Hairline. Sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, it's all good, man. Oh, no. So the six no, woman tag, no, though. Your thoughts on that one? The six woman Which tag, one? Jade. The six, like Jade and all that. Yeah. He said yeah, that yeah. one was insane. What do you think about insane? Or it's the... like I was saying. It was a solid match and very good storytelling, but Jade had a few green moments. Um, and okay. Bianca Belair was definitely the MVP of the match. I yeah, thought but... Naomi laid out a little too long. Um, it... And it was also hilarious how Asuka was fucking hella getting down to fucking the entrance music. Oh, yeah. She always does. She always does. You gotta love Asuka. I love Asuka. Kana. Just kidding. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kana! No, that's no, a, that's a throwback good. PWT right there. Uh, no. It says, uh, I can't show it. Sorry, dude. The studio is fucking up. Uh, here, I'll try. Here we go. And she says, actually hurts my stomach. Yeah, it's fucking goofy. And it's not even really actually over. Phil, I hear a draft has happened. Um, oh, well, fine. This guy's saying, L- LOL, let do Jim Cornette review on AEW next, Phil. This guy's going crazy in the chat. Thank you for hanging out with us, man. We really appreciate you. Um, so we're gonna keep playing this. <laughs> I'm sick as a dog, but we going, man. This wrestle. Rhea Ripley, congratulations again. Take some time and enjoy your win here. So hold on. This three come out. So sorry, skip too far ahead. Snickers, everyone get Snickers. Sometimes you see I had a lovely display. I had a little a little WrestleMania and um I X'd out. I said fill the shill. And I had a uh, we we had more than one bowl. There was more than one bowl of uh ruffles, snickers, and stems laid out like throughout the through our, through our like our our uh, our house and our, our like our living room and our dining area, our kitchen, like we're the people, and so um, it was awesome. It was great. Where's the soundboard? It was great. You know, people were like, oh, like they saw a Snickers ad, and they're like, oh, a Snickers, like that literally happened. So um, this is great. 
Yeah, no, I'm kind of disappointed that uh, you wouldn't educate them on how to properly eat a Slim Jim. So, Hairline, you know, educated us a long time. It's a live show, so we're doing it. Um, it's a throwback, care. right? Yeah, we're doing yeah. throwbacks to old PWP. I don't care. Yeah. Where's Robbie C? Where's Robbie C at? There could be three of you guys in this chat, and we're going old school. Um, and I'm sniffling yeah, like a shout motherfucker. Shout out to the chat, man. All three to three of you are that shit. Right. And so, uh, absolutely. And so, 33 of you, in case you don't know, the old school PWT days, hairline. Uh, well, you tell them. You tell them. Uh, what am I talking about? My bad. Well, just our old bit. Our old bit. We had an old bit. We don't. I know which one. My bad. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've spoken weed, you guys. In my which one? We're smoking bomb. I'm sorry. We botched that one so hard. Now, do you think? Okay, just guys. Hairline is pasty. Well, hairline is like. Cracker eating rice in a blizzard. White, you know, I'm mean? when I grew up in the hood and shit. Like, yeah, bad shit. so and he grew up in bad shit too, but like, white boy bad shit, you know what I mean? What people try to go, oh man, the faction versus the black faction versus the the whatever faction i fucking despise that talk i'm like dude if this was prison right you know how we did it no I'm but well no i'm not really actually joking but it's just like and you know like i don't know i i just think it's such it's like who gives a fuck about any okay i'll be right but some reason some of our friends you know, Mexican, American, you know, so it's like, who, who really cares? Like, where the fuck they're, it's just like the Latino, if you're Latino. So, it's like, dude, that's crazy talk. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy talk. You know what I mean? And she wasn't even. So I don't know. Some people were trying to give this a hard, this match a hard time. Of these three women being a tag, and I just think this was brilliant. This is one of the highlights. Of these Ridiculous, together. man! Like be together, one highlight of the night. Like six men. I don't know. Jade looked great. Like, everything great. Their engines so they're all in love. Um, you see, there's no shit. Would you got to split these legs up? But I don't know, man. My name was Peter Russell. Look at that Rock. giant Snickers. Hungry, <laughs> why wait? Go to the next year. You guys, if you guys keep at us and shit, we're gonna pull up on WrestleMania. But if we can get media passes and all that, word, and we'll ask real shit. If we ever got that, dude, we get. I'd we'd risk it in a minute, like you know. Anymore. But if we got the super chats and we saved bank that shit up over time, we're like, okay, we're gonna go to Mania and like, I don't know, try and get in this press junket hairline. What would you ask? Yeah, I, definitely not some Mark ass shit like that guy said to Rhea Ripley. I'll tell you that much. And definitely what, not some Mark ass Dave Meltzer shit. What would you ask them? Like, I'm sitting here, like, I asked you, I'm like, dude, um, people are saying I, I think my, woke. What do you think? 
So I you think know. my first question would be, so as the CEO of AEW, do you get to tell the Young Bucks what to do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Dummy. God. Dummy. Yeah. You're ruthless. You're the one that said shout out this guy. You're ruthless, dude. I know. Yeah, Doug. Hey, I'm fucking drunk. You're, you're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're live. We're too drunk. Fuck it. We're live. So, in such an incredible fashion, next to Bianca, next to Naomi, this was a historical moment. People from around the world were watching. So, I would love to know your thoughts because the three of you made history tonight. First and foremost, I would have never thought that I would have graced the stage with these two. Oh, let the video play for look. Like bring some good pause I don't even know. and then hit play stop doing that voice bring it to a good moment bring it to like a like a that's what they say bring it to a natural pause moment it's like bro get your own show <laughs> yeah no shit get your own dude, podcast you know, how about that show. how about you do this you know what I mean? Me and, hairline, me and Hairline are goofing. Me and Hairline are having a fucking blast. You know what I mean? Like you you go have fun with your friend and fucking and you do it your way, you know? Here we go. I think I would have never here's here's it. Jade just putting Bianca and and uh Trinity fought to over like fucking Rover here. So three of you made history tonight. First and foremost, I would have never thought that I would have graced the stage with these two phenomenal women. I think I would have never gotten, first of all, this is Miss WrestleMania, <laughs> undefeated. Then we have Miss Veteran over here that knows TNA. great mic skills. Every time. I mean, look at her in the ring, guys. She needs to do it every given moment. I would have never. This is my first WrestleMania. It's only gonna go up from here. Up, up can only go up from here. Shania Twain, Canada. Let's go. Good answer. Good. Good. Wow. Good. 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 Canada. Hey, Eli, if you're on the live show, you gotta do what you're singing. That's it. <laughs> I'm ADD, bro. I talk to myself out loud about. and I sing to myself out loud all the time. Here we go. How about bro. you tell me when you were walking through the forest there, pal, and you stepped in a puddle? <laughs> oh, so you Brad Pitt? That don't impress me much. <laughs> <laughs> Muslim fitness. Congratulations on lighting up the room. You wouldn't realize how cold it was. Michael Moore said it was chilly and Philly. It was chilly, was. Philly. Oh, it, was just... yeah, it was real chilly and Philly. Is there getting people at the airport? It was really great. I met a lot of good friends and fans. And they came to ROH. All right, folks, welcome to the hairline show. Um, so, so, uh, just crashed there. So, let's talk about how Motion and White never did my entrance before. Horrible, horrible, horrible situation there. 
so yeah anyways guys um i guess we'll read some of the chats here um <laughs> so the isaiah says here uh Hey Phil, hope you're doing well. Breaking news: the Bucks are going to reveal footage of all-time Wembley. Man, oh God, that sounds about right, don't it? Young Bucks Wembley bullshit. Jesus. Oh, yeah, and you know, I was actually uh, hanging out and I actually got Don Stevens because uh, I was doing too much Tony Khan versions. Uh, things just went off the fuck off the rails. I'm so sorry. No, I'm here, guys. What's up? Um, uh, please, for hopefully, here. I don't know that. Um, here we go. Hairline's rejoining. Boom. Hairline, are you here? What's up? All right, there we go. Woo! No, I heard you. the fucking Tony Khan must have fucking yeah, been trying to fucking take us out. It's going too hard. Okay, I heard we were chats for a second. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, I was trying to read chats, but then Tony Khan clearly set some kind of fucking. On you too. We both got Don yeah. Stevens, bro. Okay, yep. so. We, Oh right no, it was round. actually not Don Stevens. I'm it, was oh, it was Don you think Stevens. This is how I sound? Take him out. <laughs> so let's uh, uh TK and then we got cut off. So. We have uh dance that Garcia. Okay, we got watching Naomi in the 2010s. Hey Phil, hope you're doing well. Breaking news. Looks are going to reveal footage of all time Wembley. I don't believe you. Isaiah Kelly, uh, come back and show me proof of that, and I'll believe. Do you know what I mean? Not to hate on you, but uh, are we live? Is everything live? And I hope, I hope everything live. Is. No, well, oh, I'm alone again. I might be broadcasting. I don't know. My word is not. I don't know what to do, guys. We'll be back. We'll try to be back. Just posted it on Twitter. Also, fix your off. Yeah, see, we're fucking up. It's just something to do with, uh, I don't know, our inner, like, it's just some internet stuff, dude. Don Stevens. I was doing too much. Um, <laughs> I was doing too much Don Stevens, I think. Here we go. Hairline's back. Hairline back? Yeah, yeah Tony Khan again. Oh, yeah, I'll show you. It's not a joke. Stop doing the voice. I'm not a clown. Yeah, my, 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 uh, Hold on, hopefully it. Yeah, see, my, my girlfriend's here is like, no, it's fucking up, isn't it? I'm like, yeah, I think it is. Uh, oh, that sucks that it just botched out, but at least we're back. I think we're back, right, Hairline? Are we back? Can you hear me? Is everything good? Tony Khan's talking to your girlfriend? No, dude. You'd knock the fuck out if that ever happened. But so just said they posted it on Twitter. Also, fix your auto, please. You meant audio. Because, yeah, we glitched the fuck out, guys. I think Don Stevens tried to pluck us out of the atmosphere. And then my girlfriend came in here to check on everything to make sure y'all are good. So you guys better appreciate that shit. But don't bring her up again, or it's fisty cups, okay? 
Um, so we have a bear on the airline. You're with me, correct? Right? Like, should I share the screen? Are we good to go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that shit was fucked up. We just got totally matrix. I think that was Don Stevens. I was going. It was actually Tony Khan, dude. He he, he sent me a mess, a private message in the Discord, Discord, and he said, yeah. "Yeah, yeah." He said, "If we do the voice again, he's gonna take out our fucking." Oh no! I no. might do it one more again. Yeah, you do it again. I'll take you down. We went to WrestleMania. I never felt no, not at all. It was an iconic moment. I didn't feel it because I have. <laughs> Everything time I turn it all like way earlier so that there's even so short that he okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're back. Anyone in the chat who's chat who's like, you guys are cutting out. Yeah, we know. I don't know what the fuck happened. We just got hit by Don. We were doing Tony Khan and we just got Don Stevens. I think <laughs> that could be what it is, but either way, we're back. Now. We're back. Oh, is that it's hard for any one of them to stand out? Um, like, do you guys think that they stand out as like a trio? Like, you know, one of them. Could go, I don't know. I always look at people as like, who's the single star who's going to go for the title here? You know what I'm saying? Hairline, are you with me? I don't know. We're live streaming. Sorry if we're cutting out. We're trying to make this work. I don't know what's going on. Ugh, we're desperate. Ugh, no. Fuck it. We're just going to keep it going until it works entirely. I just don't know if Heron's with me. Is it on? Is it me? Like, I'm just sitting here, like, here we go. See, your line just flaked out again. I don't know what it is. Let us know. Let us know in the chat what's going on. Yeah, so um, Hairline will probably be back. Here he is. Here he is. Here he is. Hairline, are you with me? <laughs> it's like guys live show technical yeah pal fuck it we'll do it live and if you don't like oh i don't know you decided we'll to do get rid tape. of me huh just tape that shit on a tuesday how about that and you can ride on my private plane if you're a diva but only if you're a diva you're a superstar I don't know about all that. You could be fine. Guys, I hope everything's working. I don't think it is. We're just fucking around now at this point. Um, Can you hear me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Worst live show in the history of live shows. Robbie Morgan says you guys are cutting out. Yeah, exactly. But you can hear me now, correct? Like, we're good. You and me are... Yeah, you guys, we're sorry if we're not producing a (laughs) top-tier product here. Well, just some shit happened, okay? There's an internet problems in two different countries. I don't fucking know, dude. It is what it is. Hairline, you're good to go. You're here with me. Yeah. Okay, so here we go, guys. Here we go. Top pot is still in. By the way, 
talking to each other. Yeah, but we, we, had we held it down. We held it down. We held it down. I think I got a little vertigo a little bit. Uh, right, Something. Right, I don't right, know. Right. I got the, when it when it was the swaying and moving, I ain't like that. I ain't like that at all. (laughs) We held him. I always say that representation is not is not a request. It's a request. Representation, representation. Wakanda. Okay, hairline. You can't say that. It's about women. You can't say that. (laughs) (laughs) People are gonna get mad, motherfucker. I Uh, love that movie, dude. Me too. Representation, yes. Okay. Representation again. This is the norm. Yeah, we know. So stop bringing it up. That's what drives me crazy. It's like, yeah, we we know. It's all good, bro. I ain't tripping. That's why I brought it up earlier. Like people are bringing up. Oh, it's a Mexican team versus the black team versus the Japanese the Jap team. I heard that the Jap team and their wing friend. Like Dakota Kai's from New Zealand, bro. Like it's bro. just like I don't know. It's crazy to me. You know, like we know it's normal. I'm not tripping out because you're three black girls. I'm chilling, just watching. Stop bringing it up every two fucking seconds. You know, that's what right. that's what trips me out. Yeah. No, you're completely right. No, I'm- but they're they're like media trained. You know, like the media is like, no, like bring that shit up. Like say that shit a bunch of times. You know, so I don't. I don't. I'm not like mad at them. It's just. It's just. This is like I'm a native dude. I get it. You know. Yeah. Like. I don't know. Here we go. I'm I'm ready. It's cool to be the first, <laughs> but I'm ready to get away from that conversation to where it's the norm. And yeah. it's just it's just women going out there and we're just having great matches. Yes. And it's just oh they had a great match. Great. They're amazing. Yeah. And that's just what it is, period. That's it. Period. Tony Khan, it's great. 65 and out. Fucking bury the company on my way out. I think Jade's the goat. Just for doing that, sixty-five and O on your company, and then just dips out like what? Right, the- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just retarded, man. It's so funny. Naomi, Bianca, Jay, congratulations! Job well done on making some history tonight. Shout out Byron yeah. fucking Saxton, man. WrestleMania forty. Thank you, Paul Heyman. He is the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. Acknowledge. I just don't want to get pulled for the music, but yeah, this is uh look at all the Snickers everywhere. I had a bunch of Snickers bars laid out throughout my my pad. Actually, I I indulged in one or two. <laughs> you also had Slim Jims that you didn't eat properly. Hairline, tell them how you're supposed to eat a Slim Jim. Oh, I skipped the video. We went to the Slammies. So tell them as I get back to where we were. 2024 Slammies, ladies and gentlemen. Live hours. Okay, but like, how how are you supposed to eat a fucking Slim Jim? Tell the people. So you start at the top and you slightly peel the skin off. And then you work your way down in a spiral like motion. And then you take the uh, collagen off. Um, the Slim Jim, the, like th- that layer is the same shit they use in fucking uh, latex for boobs and shit. So you guys are literally collagen. eating fucking boob collagen around your Slim Jim, brother. I ate like seven boob collagenists tonight, dude. <laughs> and then listen, if you don't believe me, do it. Like, do it yourself. Like, buy a Slim Jim and see if it peels off. You know, nah, dude. <laughs> nah, dude. I ain't down with that. No, I'm just joking. Here we go. It's right here in the middle. Chris Van Vliet with insight. Congratulations on the victory tonight. Shout out, Chris Van Vliet. Mr. Heyman, you talked before that it was the third inning for the bloodline. What inning are we in now? I'm sorry. Um, did you not hear the man say questions for Roman Reigns? 
I'm Roman sorry, Reigns. you're not going to answer my question now? So it's just a yes. one-sided conversation? I'm sorry, Mr. Heyman. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Would Roman you like Reigns. to ask Roman Reigns a question? Roman Reigns. Re my I tribal chief. Bro, Heyman is shoot. fucking just the goat. Let's bring that back. Dub W, we're an affiliate. Don't fucking pull us down. Let's bring this back. Hold Go on. Ahead, shoot. Yes, ask Roman Reigns a question. What inning are we in now? I'm sorry. Um, did you not hear the man say questions for Roman Reigns? Roman I'm sorry. Reigns. You're not going to answer my question now? So it's just a yes. one sided conversation. God damn. The yes. goat, yes. the goat, the goat, the goat, the goat. What the fuck? And I love CVV. It's not even a roast on him. It's just excellent work here. Heyman decided he's going to work. Go ahead. Next question. Very well. Next question. We're going to head towards the third row. Could the stipulation be that this one is intelligent, please? Ooh, okay, nothing. not the third row. No, don't go. Let's change ooh. the plans. I'll give you an ooh in case you didn't listen to last night. This one right here. Her. Go ahead. No, not you. Two over. Hi, my terrible chief. That's right. I acknowledge you. That's right. Everybody. Uh, Roman picks some girl. How my terrible chief? I acknowledge you. He's like, that's right. She's just bowing down in his. What do you think, Caroline? Am I out of line saying <laughs> saying the salacious nah. shit? I'm saying. What do you nah, think? She's cool. yeah. She's just bowing down at the fucking telly or what? <laughs> hey, I think fucking who who was on the panel with CM Punk? I don't was know, that... dude. But he just goes, "Nah, I'll take a question from this chick." She's like, "Bow down, my treble teeth." <laughs> Ah, uh, shit. Who did that? <laughs> Leave. Uh, someone boos. He's like, yo, who did that? <laughs> Leave. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. He says. The lady with the glasses, get her out. Dude, I wonder if he for real just kicked this chick out, dude. She booed. She booed and Roman just get her out of here. <laughs> the lady with the glasses, get her out. Get her out. <laughs> oh, dude. Use your feet. Nope. Bro, he put the one up, she booed, and he goes, Get her out from <laughs> even. Hairline, what do you think of the shoot work, work, shoot work, brother? That's the goat shit. The How goat, dare dude. How she, dare her? She dude. did it to herself, Doug. Honestly. Oh, dude. Got booted out like a fucking hussy. You're wasting our time, lady. Yep. I'm completely joking, by the way. To give Chris's analogy, this ain't baseball. There's no three strikes. <laughs> Airline, you fucking... Y'all better get some good questions. I'm here for work. I'm here to retain that's that's what i xed out i was like man everyone's wearing this flashy shit roman comes out wearing his black pants and red like he's just coming to win a match like it's business as usual he's not coming out here on some flashy shit i just thought that was it stood out to me like everybody's wearing these flashy outfits to stand out at wrestlemania what stood out to me was roman didn't wear he just came out in his blaze like it's business as usual you know what i mean and he's, right. I just love it. And he was so ripped. He wears his hoodie all the time, so you don't actually see his physique. And then you see him do that mania, and he's just like juicy, bro. He's like six packs up, dope. bro. He was six packed up. His arms were fucking Yoko zooned up, dude. Like he was fucking, yeah, he, yeah, dude. It was like real serious, bro. It was like serious business. Like same with the Rock, and you're just sitting there like, damn, man, these guys really. Like Roman always wears a hoodie, so you don't see it. But when he when he came out, it was like, dude, this guy's, you know, <laughs> no homo. He's fucking. And even if it was homo, it's all good. But it's just like he's fucking like yoked out, man. It's crazy. Key to the kingdom. I got a big week in here. I got a lot of work tomorrow night. So you should do your job now. Um, Roman, tonight you tied for most. WrestleMania main events in history. Oh, say Tomorrow, it again. say it again. 
Uh, tonight? For the most WrestleMania main events in history. Mm. <laughs> Tomorrow you will Tomorrow be breaking the record. Break yes, and you will become <laughs> the, the superstar with the most main events in history. So Roman's obviously losing tomorrow. They won tonight, and then tomorrow he'll break the record, Hulk Hogan's record for most WrestleMania main events. What do you think of that hairline? Good. Well, Roman done Roman tomorrow, Roman. though? Do you think he's done tomorrow? No, what do you think? Absolutely not. I think the Cody Crybabies are going to be phenomenal on X over the next 48 hours. Yeah, I agree. Can you talk to us about that? How does that feel? I'm already thinking about 10. Thinking about the next night. We're going to smash tomorrow night, and then we're going to move on. That's how it is. That's what, that's what greatness is. We don't sit in it. We're worried about the next goal. Write that down. You're going to put it on the internet and say, I said that, but you got it from your tribal chief. Next question. Bam. That was a really good answer for tribal chief. It came from my mouth. Uh, James Delo from Gorilla Position. Hi, Roman. Uh, congratulations on tonight. Uh, Pat McAfee on... Um, Pat McAfee on commentary. Commentary tonight. <laughs> how did I know how he is going to say it? Said you are currently suffering with leukemia. And I wa was wondering if you could clarify that. I know your health issues in the past, but can you build on what he was referring to there? Well, I'm still on oral chemo. No, what a mark. It's a medication. And it's just like... And then and then Roman has to say, well, I'm still on oral chemotherapy. Like, I still take oral pills to fight my blood cancer every day. And it fucks me up. And I can't eat certain food, foods because it makes me sick to my stomach. And, in fact, the sunlight makes me feel sick. And that's why I wear a fucking hoodie everywhere. But I got to do that shit because I'm the fucking goat. Like, what is this Mark even saying to you? Why would yeah, you no shit. Ask yeah, like, it's just like, what is Roman even going to say? Is Yeah, dude, I'm the goat and I have fucking cancer while I'm goading on you motherfuckers. Like, you know, like, what do you want him to say, dude? Like, come on. We already know. Oh, oh right. like, a blood cancer five years ago. Oh, Pat McAfee said you had blood cancer still. He's like, yeah, motherfucker, I had blood cancer. Like, I had blood cancer. What the fuck do you? Who cares if it was fucking far? Who cares if it was today or three years ago or five minutes? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, oh, no shit. Bro, just mark shit. I'm going to have to remain on my entire life, most likely. Yeah, my entire life. It's going to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to deal with this blood cancer my whole life. Like. I'm not laughing at Roman. I'm just laughing at this fucking idiot. Like, what kind of stupid question is that? I wouldn't even ask that stupid shit. Um, oh my god. So yeah, that's shout just out who my personal battle. Shout out whoever asked him the question. I'm not hating on you, but here's esports in the UK and Ireland. Exactly a year ago, I asked you how you felt about the result and the execution of the main event and what you have been doing for the past three, four years. And you were kind of almost begging for the industry to try and take the ball away from you. And I'm just wondering now that you've put this match together with your cousin, The Rock, from a creative point of view and also a results and execution point of view, how do you feel about what you did tonight? I feel what we did tonight, um, it started in 2020, August of 2020. Um, That's a long fucking time ago. Long term storytelling. Yeah, dude, four fucking years ago. Yeah. To attract a global superstar like my cousin, you got to have. You, you got to be on the up and up. You have to have something special going on because he always has something special being offered. So this had to have been something even greater than even Hollywood could offer him. And he does all kinds of stuff now. He, he, he He's that successful. So for him to pay attention to us and want to be involved with what we're doing, it just speaks on how special the bloodline is and how we prime this place and made this place a destination for everybody. There, there's no question now. Except for O'Connor, Osprey, or Monet. They flopped on free agents. 
creatively or or mentally really was the attitude like i understand adding family members bringing them in but from a creative standpoint from a mental standpoint what really changed for you with your approach going forward well we're in the middle of the pandemic we're in the uh we hadn't even gone in the thunder watch the uh a and e roman documentary if you want to hear this shit let's go along i love roman guys but i'm not going to get pulled down for this shit so we're gonna just skip ahead a bit Watch the Roman A and E biography if you want to know his. He's losing the belt tomorrow. I'm sorry to say, I really don't want him to, but it's just too obvious at this point. I feel it's your fine man, which is why we might get swerved, which I'll pop so hard. And all of it. And I didn't. I didn't bet on tomorrow night. So hopefully tomorrow night is. Hopefully the lines are better now. Here's The Rock, though, guys. We're going to listen to The Rock. What The Rock said. A fake-ass title. Not even a real title. Oh, yeah, no, FKW. Oh, yeah, off screen. I'm real sick. It was real sick tonight. We had the rock. It was great. Okay, ladies first. Let's head to uh, the front row. Chivalry lives. Oh, Denise Salcedo, Instinct Culture. Rock, it's been so. Caroline, your thoughts on Denise Salcedo? A lot of people hate on her. Your thoughts on her? I don't really know her, to be honest, man, so I can't really give you the. She went viral for going up to Big Show and being like, yeah, you know, it was like right before an AW pay-per-view and she was like, yeah, you know, Bray Wyatt just died. We covered it on the show and you you were like, what? Oh, yeah, I guess Mark? I spoke it away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, we, I barely remember it too, but she's all, she's all good with me. But yeah, that was cringe when she did that. But it was one instance. Anyways. Well, I guess go years. back. Listen this shit was streamed a few it. hours ago. Half a million views on WWE. And guys, let me sh- sell you on some ball shavers. Real quick. How would you like it if I sold you on some? What's ball- happening? Pro- I'm just joking. Let's get back to this. <laughs> Let's get back to Fucking slammies are tomorrow, though. You guys better tune in because we're going to have to cover it on PWD pod and I'm exhausted. Since you have been in the ring getting physical in an actual matchup, I want to start off by asking you how you're feeling right now coming off of that main event. Uh, I feel great. Body feels great. Uh, I just had the time of my life. It's great. And I put in a lot of work. We had a hell of a training camp, which lasted probably about 10 to 12 weeks and i wanted to make sure that i was as prepared as i possibly could be these guys who so hairline gallus are you familiar with gallus and nxt they were getting the rock prepared for this match they did what they got the rock prepared for this match with cody and seth that's a trip right crazy they were training with the rock for like 10 weeks dude wrestled with tonight as you guys know they're the best in the world and on the planet and i want to because people were like oh the rockets blown up after a promo but he's like yeah well but at wrestlemania i'm gonna be able to run 40 fucking seven laps you know like we we said it on the show like well yeah you know but when it comes to game time he's gonna be good to, it's the fucking rock he ain't stupid you know He's like smarter than like fucking ninety nine percent of people. That's why he's the Rock, you know. Anyway, oh, yeah, he's great. Yeah, he is really great. I wanted to make sure that uh, I came in and game ready and ring ready as best I can. As you guys know, it's impossible to simulate 
what happens in the ring. You can run your training camps. I had a ring set up and flown to Hawaii where we were at, where I spent a lot of Hawaii. Of my time with my family where we live a ring in california too as well there was a ring in georgia i like how is that a make sure that around every corner and everywhere that i went uh the first quarter oh yeah we're the game your brother ring. yeah he's ring. just like no i'm gonna be really nice and uh <laughs> check out my sweet check out my sweet what? bell bottoms they're really sweet i got them <laughs> custom tailor-made <laughs> of wrestlers who are really amazing and, and willing to Worked their asses off uh, to just make sure that I was prepared. So we went out there. It was weird, too, because, like, they're outside. So it was, like, cold outside. And then during the main event, no one was really looked, like, sweaty. You know what I mean? And that kind of fucked me up. I was like, it just didn't, I don't know. It, it sounds weird, but, like, a, a sweaty, hard-fought battle. <laughs> no homo. No, if it's homo, it's cool, dude. We're cool. But yeah, I, I, it's just like no one was sweaty at the end of it. Like everyone was all dry and just looked like video game characters. It was kind of funny. There, um, I enjoyed every second of that. And I, I've been a lucky guy over the years to have participated in some pretty cool things that have been very gratifying. Fucking A, dude. There's nothing like performing. Uh, at WrestleMania in front of thousands and thousands of people. Um, and there's nothing like performing. They said the attendance was like 72 point, like 72,500 hairline. That's a, that's all in, right? Like according to Paul Nolan, that's what all in did it was like about 70. He's been there for like 90,000 people fights or whatever. He's been there when Tyson Fury fought in front of 90,000 people or whatever. That's why we have him on the show, folks. So Paul Nolan Paul Nolan would tell you like what All In was. He's like, you know, it was about 60 to 70,000 people. I've been there a bunch of times. This arena they claim is like 72 and a half. Like this shit outdrew All In. Can we be real? And then tomorrow not to mention, right. pardon me, I'm burping into the mic, which is utterly atrocious, but not to mention that the night before on SmackDown in a different building for the Hall of Fame slash SmackDown, they drew like, what was it, like 18,000, 17,000 people or whatever it was. Right, hairline, am I tripping? Like, this is crazy no, fucking. Right, gotta, like, this shit bodies all in. Like, fuck all in. Like, what is all in? Me and Hairline could run a wrestling show and hire all the top talent, and it would draw 70k. Yeah, I'm just kidding, but like, not really, you know. Um, so it, here's it, the rock. It, yeah, it'd be it, Phil Hairline it, and um, and, and the Rev on commentary. We we take on uh Beer Money Express. <laughs> <gasps> Dude, they're still doing indie spots. And look at The Rock with this phony-ass people's title. He awarded it to himself at the Hall of Fame. So he's getting this idea over. And if when you guys saw at the end of the match, the ref was trying to hand Seth his world title, and The Rock went over and kicked that belt to the side and held up his title. And he's told Seth before, weeks ago, he said, I'm going to erase that title. That title don't mean shit, boy. I'm the fuck telling you guys we're getting the rock versus seth rock versus roman rock versus cody rock versus fucking we're getting fucking everything we're getting everything oh yeah all right all thanks guys actually no uh we'll just have him fight kyle fletcher for uh Meltzer yeah, for the stars. and shout out shadow <laughs> batash we gotta show love shadow batash has been a longtime supporter a patreon supporter and uh, she says she works for Fightful. That's all you need to know. So Shadow uh, Batash, she usually calls out these people on Fightful, these female reporters on Fightful, and I think it's hilarious. Um, so she just called out another one. I'm not actually sure who specifically she was another talking one. about. Yeah, but there was another one, I'm sure, talking some dummy shit. Here's The Rock either walking away or... Is that it? Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh he was clowning. Uh, fourth row. Uh, Mark my DSPN. Uh, Dwayne, it has been a very long time since we've seen you. Uh, is this it? Do you, do you plan on doing more? When can we see you again? I know, obviously, there's tomorrow night, but 
Well, and the Rock keeps holding up his elbow. Oh, you got an owie? The more yeah, big match the Rock coming. Yeah, exactly. In your future, pro oh, wrestling yeah, brother. Yeah, it's just the marks online. They're like, oh, he's he, oh, he hurt his elbow. It's like, yeah, dude, he's working. Yep, it might be. <laughs> Is there more coming? He's like, there might be. What kind of mark? Obviously, there's more coming, dude. You know, like, hey, bro, we right. get to pick the rules tomorrow. Obviously, I'm going to come pick the rules tomorrow. Like, fucking got a stupid ass dummy dumb fucking the rocks like ask me a real fucking question here dude it's, it's so stupid it's so stupid. yeah and like uh, come on man i'm phil marks but i would do better question than that dude that's crazy <laughs> hey is there gonna be more shit yeah did you not just see me kick the world heavyweight title to the ground yeah that's probably gonna be something to do with that in a minute when we go to netflix because that's the raw belt fucking idiot sorry i get too mad we're probably burning bridges that's the thing with pwt that's why you guys tune in we burn bridges before we even cross them <laughs> can't elaborate that much well, did you that. see what your buddy reported here no but he's got way more viewers than us haha <laughs> i'm sad. i love our business and uh, i was born into our business as you guys know so we'll see Uh, Rock in the middle here, Chris Vanini, The Athletic, Getting Over Wrestling Podcast. This was the first WrestleMania without Vince McMahon. What do you think of the job, Triple H? Do you think if I was as drunk as like I am now or even like an hour ago, Hairline, do you think if I asked them a question, they would like, The Rock would be like, yeah, dude, what's up? You know, what do you think? Just knowing me, what do you think? Sure. Sure, yeah, same with you. It's like we would be just as bad of marks. That's what I'm getting. Like we we fucking I criticize these fucking marks, and I'm just like, dude, he would look at me and be like, You're a mark, dude. When I I've no, seen we're not we're not okay, so we're marked, but we're not this level of marks. We're not yeah. oh Rhea Ripley, it's nice to see you. Or hey, <laughs> yeah, that's like true, that's true. CEO yeah. of the young bucks. I, I, here's the thing. I saw Roman Reigns a couple times. He he remembered me like 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 two or three times but one of the main times well i'm just speaking the facts he he like we because we talked and shit he grabbed me one time like out of like a crowd actually it was like there was a crowd of people he grabbed me and fucking pulled me and was like how you doing bro da, 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 da. so roman's like a great dude man i've seen him do like fucking table spots i've seen him take like a stairs to the head on house shows in nowhere and he fucking does it you know like that guy that's why I'm the bloodline's so over with me. I gotta be honest. Like Roman's been grinding. Um, uh, yeah, it's goat. It's honestly goat shit. So I. That's why it's infinitely over. But I just love the. I mean, yeah. Who doesn't like Cody? Rudd? Like it's a, he's gonna win tomorrow, right? Like if 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 Cody and Seth won tonight, then obviously Rock and Roman would win tomorrow. Or like Roman would win tomorrow, but since Roman and Rock won tonight, it's obvious Cody's going to win tomorrow, right? Like it's got to be that way, right, Hairline? I don't know. I don't. I don't think Cody's winning, man. You, you Hairline, hold on, dude. We got to drop you guys. Hold on, Hairline. I need you here. Right, hold on. <laughs> So Roman's dropping, not dropping the strap tomorrow. That's what you believe. Correct. And the Cody crybabies are going to cry. It's Dusty Rhodes 101, Doug. You're so right. So then when does Cody win it? Here's the thing. Remember when Roman hit the spear on Rock tonight? Do you think, obviously, that's subtle storytelling? We're yeah, oh, yeah. It. It's been We're that the whole get- time. Right. We're going to get Rock and Roman next year for the title in the main event. Or do you think it's like co main event to like Cody with the title versus someone? Well, wait, though. What if it's Rock and Roman? Because that sells itself. You don't need a triple threat. And then you have Cody with the belt versus someone. Right? Next year. 
or or yeah i really should we're i'm asking hairline he's like i don't care he's like it all sounds good <laughs> hairline's like hairline's sitting there he's like it's great you know um but yeah they just done and anything about it. <laughs> god damn it. yeah this is the goatish show man the goatish the goatish pro wrestling show i don't care what anyone says the top is the, uh, I think that Triple H has done a tremendous job as our chief creative officer. Hey, I Triple think H that's is his great. title. He has a few, uh, earned every single one of them. Uh, I, I like ushering in new things and new times and new eras. And it feels like in our world here of professional wrestling, uh, it is a new era that we're ushering in. I talked to Paul Levesque, Triple H, earlier uh, as we were kicking off. and um, It's weird to them because they want to call him Hunter, just so everyone knows. Kicking off the show tonight and without giving any detail on what we talked about, like it was, right. it's a special night for him. This was the beginning of something, oh, new, so nice of something new. Uh, At the top of the show, we played the the new then now forever together where it's clearly triple h's voice hairline said it should be his voice and it should be and it's the universe it's all the stars and the galaxies colliding some illuminati shit yeah someone commented they're like oh these guys are libtards they hate alex jones because i was doing an alex jones impression It's so a bunch of goofs. I know. Uh, for him, uh, uh, under his creative, and I think from a company standpoint, this is an exciting time for the company for WWE. It's an exciting time for TKO. Uh, you felt the convergence uh, towards the end of the year when the acquisition happened. You felt the convergence. Uh, convergence should we google that word let's google that word converse so it's got to be c-o-n-v-e-r-g-e-n-c-e right convergence port convergence the process or state of converging the convergence of lines in the distance biology the tendency of unrelated animals and plants to evolve superficially similar characteristics under similar environmental conditions. These bot example, these bivalves have assumed similar characters by convergence. Or a location where air flows or ocean currents meet, character- characteristically marked by upwelling of air or downwelling of water we just pulled a jim cornet and we just dictionaried what the fuck convergence means and that's a great word pulled by the rock i must say <laughs> that was a great pull in the first quarter of the year as i was fortunate enough to come back and as we kind of traversed our way through uh what these storylines could look like And so it's an exciting time. And I think we capped off day one of WrestleMania, of this WrestleMania uh, that we have stated was gonna be the biggest of all time, which is really saying a lot, obviously considering given the givens and how many great WrestleManias there's been in the past. So I thought that we collectively as a company and as a team uh, put out a really good show tonight. And the best part- Oh yeah, it was great. About putting out a great show tonight is you get to do it all over again tomorrow yeah that's what's crazy we get a whole wrestlemania tomorrow second round a selling of the company i think that kind of um became the impetus to really look i think holistically at 
the opportunity of doing WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia. And a, a lot of things had to come together. And sure, the agreement and the deal, I'm not worried about that, especially when, especially when the negotiations are between myself, Ari Emanuel, and Nick Khan, both of whom I've known for a very, very long time. Uh, Nick and I actually go back to Hawaii when we were kids, and Ari I've known for over 20 years. He's my lead agent and business partner. So I wasn't concerned about the agreement. I was more so, my number one priority was can I come back and add real value this time around and not, you know, coming back for hot shots one at a time, maybe. I, oh yeah, hot shots are great if you book them every week. Make an appearance one night. That's fun, it's fun for the fans, but I wanted something a little bit more, a lot more substantial and not only a lot more substantial, but something that we can uh, really build upon. And so these past, two, three months, uh, I, I think we've been laying groundwork nicely and not only building for WrestleMania this weekend, but also uh, I think beyond that and building for the future and what that could Boom. Future. That's what we talk about all the time here. Truck through it, which there were a few opinions in the room. Uh, hey, of course, we. I don't like all this. The Cody Cry Babies, which is you know fun. Bro. Oh yeah, uh, in the room we were shooting on kayfabe and the work kayfabe shoot shoot work. I don't like that shit, but either way, branding. But the truth is, they matter. And fans matter, and their voice matters. Oh yeah, except for mine. Except for mine, because I drink soda waters, and I just said like, oh, I don't really like the shoot work work. I just Snickers though. It tastes great. And uh, we had, had a bunch of Snickers at my house party. Touch grass, though. Little marks. You know, you don't touch grass. Had this opportunity to really listen to him again. So one of two things could have happened. We could have either trucked through it or listened. And in this case, it, it became crystal clear to me <clears throat> after wow. Birmingham, Alabama, where we had that moment in the ring, oh, if you guys may rem remember. Oh, yeah. Tone, tone, tiny cons here. <laughs> I don't have a cold. We're just going. <laughs> You're lying. Uh, stop me. I don't want to get blocked. Did you see Triple H unveiling the fucking red YouTube thing? Are you bored with this? I'm fucking. Are you guys chat? Are you guys done with this rock shit? And who does that? Who, who, who can I partner with and who can I build? Here, and Triple H out here. I, fucking Rock's cool, but like fucking, I want like fucking fuck the Rock right now. Okay, he's just all bad Triple H. Yeah, I'm a Paul Levesque guy, and like he's about to read like what the attendance was and all the real shit. He's gonna answer the real questions. We'll do him, guys, and then we'll get get the fuck out of here. Thank you for any of you who hung out with us tonight. Like, let's be honest to God, like. And tomorrow we're going to come back with another live. So I hope there's even more of you. An officer of WWE for some remarks. Please welcome Paul Triple H Levesque. No music. Usually it's like bow down to the after bow down. After 30 years now I would have learned. Never follow the rock. <laughs> uh, yeah, never uh, follow uh, the rock. Uh. Dude, when I was growing up, Triple H was my favorite fucking wrestler. Yeah, he um, was one of my favorites as well. Bro, it just took my dad one time. I was playing WWF No Mercy, and I hit random, and it picked Triple H, and I was always down with DX. But it picked Triple H random, and my dad went, who's Triple H? And I was like, me. And he's like, Triple H is the fucking man. And I was like, yeah, dude, that's my guy now. Isn't that crazy? That's how pro wrestling works, dude. Generational. Now he's yeah. running the fucking company. Crazy. But here I am. Anyway, 
Um, like DX, it's so funny because the Young Bucks cosplay DX, and then they help run that company into the ground. But real DX is running WWE, and they're like bringing it the greatest success of all time, dude. Yeah, a fucking joke. Like it's fucking just ridiculous. Thank you all for being here, and uh, I just want to take a second to thank our partners for tonight, which I thought was. Oh yeah, Snickers. I had a bunch in like different bowls located across the located across the home, and uh, my guests enjoyed it. But I just need to touch grass because I did pro wrestle podcast. That's real great. Lincoln Financial Field, where amazing partners. Next uh, year will well be a WrestleMania with PWG shirts behind Michael Cole. It's great here and yeah, they're all great wells fargo center philadelphia visitors and convention center all made it possible for us to be here um you know i feel like when we come into these cities and we sort of take over um in many ways it's imperative uh, for us to have the right partners in those what's fucked up here line is it's only night one i know <laughs> that's what's fucked we have to do another one of these tomorrow and be wasted let's go those locations and in those cities and it couldn't have been any better than it was and is right now here in philly still continuing um and thank all of you it's a packed room i don't know if the guy before me had anything to do with that maybe a little bit um but i really appreciate it um we also have just over the course of this week other partners that were Snickers was really great. I ate like one of them. It was actually one of them with peanut with, butter. Uh, Michael. I sprung for the for the peanut butter collab <laughs> for the party. <laughs> Ruben no and fanatics, fanatics WWE shop create. below. You click the link and uh, you support the show and support WWE WWE World. It's great. Uh, w- also, we got a Patreon. And, uh, you can become, yeah. A <laughs> yeah. become a member. Ninety nine cents coming to Canadian. That's like, you know, <laughs> not that very much, but we'd appreciate it. The Young Bucks. You know, WWE is such an impactful part of so many people's lives that I think, in many ways, as as I've. unbelievable form of entertainment where they can just escape from their everyday uh things that they have to go to or go through the up he says that shit every time we know you're a hippie also our community outreach here television event and shadow community outreach but we're doing a pod they've ever done domestically smackdown highest grossing of all time this afternoon, NXT, Shawn Michaels, and that crew um, set a record for NXT, which... Boom, multiple records in one day. In two days. Oh, no, but, like, I'll just rent this big arena with, like, 18K, and then, like, if it just so happens to fill up, that would be great. But if it doesn't, that would be great, you know? Yeah, Mark I just want to take a step. Uh, Kyle Fletcher, five stars, Dave Meltzer. Back and just um, what are you doing? My hats off. It's 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 like when Ariel's like, "Well, what is the company about?" And then CM Punk goes, "I don't I don't know." <laughs> the way he says it, it's like, <laughs> I, "I I don't know what it's about." You know, like I guess getting Melter stars. Like I I don't know what they're yeah, really basically figured it out. Crazy man. To them. Um, what they've accomplished in the last few years with NXT has been nothing short of amazing. You see kids there that from the time they very first stepped through the ropes for the absolute first time within a year to two years are just lighting the world on fire. And you can see that future developing right before your eyes. Every time I watch uh, NXT yeah, NXT now, next it's, gen is great. Monday, but we broke our all-time single night gate record here tonight. Boom. Um, 
Seventy-two thousand. Check the fucking turnstile. More than all in. Um, you know, Mother Nature wasn't the most cooperative with us this week, uh, throwing everything at us from small earthquakes to to uh, some some very cold and windy weather. I'm glad it didn't rain, but um, it was a bit chilly at ringside. I don't know if any of the other uh, talent talked about it, but, um, I've heard quite a few stories about wind gusts that just put a chill through people. And when you're having to be physical in what we do, that's a difficult situation. So my hat is off to the talent tonight. Um, all of them, uh, you know, I could go through a form of entertainment like this on the planet. Nothing else can do that for you. Um, so I know why he comes back, but the, the dedication, the sacrifice, of somebody that does not have to do this to come back and entertain our fans to, as he said, to create a new mountain for himself and take that challenge. My hat's off to him. This is not easy. And what he did is not easy. Um, and he looked like he never missed a beat. He looked like he was in better shape than ever. Yeah. Hairline. what do you think about the rock man? Like he was all on par. He fucking was jacked up. Like he looked fucking. He was looking great. Um, he's doing the best work of his career and he's putting the younger talent over. So like, this has all been a positive, all positives, you know? So it's, it's just, great. yeah, it's really great. So yeah. the, the night when I was fortunate enough to be able to go out there and experience that crowd, um, this is a new time on all levels. Uh, Dwayne just said the same thing. New time, new era, um, and we're just getting started. So I don't see this as the culmination of the hard work that's been happening over the last year, two years, uh, or whatever. I see it as the launching point. I see it as this is the start. This is the beginning. Um, so with that, I'll open it up to questions. That's why we had that new intro and shit. Start off in the third row. Philip up, awful announcing. Uh, I have a two part question. Uh, just take me through tonight as your first night as head of creative. And what did Paul Heyman's comments mean to you in his hall? I don't want to do the night? questions. These guys are such fucking. Marvel I know. And he's like, what do you think about yeah. your first night as the head of creative? Triple yeah, H man, is like, I've been, yeah. he's like, he's like, I've been the head of creative for fucking how long yeah. now? You fucking Mark? You Jesus. Um, but who's just doing things. Um, the most impressive thing to me was his composure and having been gone that long, that just, to, to me, that's awe-inspiring. Talking about The Rock. Do something with the women there. We haven't done that for a little bit. Like, what? But then that, that, how, how is that equality? You know what I mean? Like, it's just not how it should be thought of i see every athlete we have is the same doesn't doesn't matter to me male female anything else doesn't matter fucking rights triple h saying real shit right there he just skipped ahead he said some real shit right there doesn't matter male female if you're over you're over and you boom he just can get that emotion out of you when sean begins to then make a comeback and begins to fire up and begins to um put that anger out or, or whatever out of you. And that's Sammy's calling card. Yes, he does spectacular things, but his ability as a performer, as an actor, as a, whatever you want to call it, to pull that up. We were- He's talking about Sammy Zane, and Sammy Zane, of course, has a Netflix special coming out that we talked about. Guys, thanks so much for fucking tuning in. We're going to dip the fuck out of here. Thank you for hanging out with us, whoever did. We're going to be wasted and drunk tomorrow talking to you guys about WrestleMania night two. We're going to do that as well. And then on Monday, the Monday before Raw, you're going to have like a whole day full of PWT, yeah, to fill you up before the fucking Raw WrestleMania. Yeah. But as soon as Mania ends tomorrow night, we're going to jump on the live, too. I'm sick as fuck. I appreciate you all for joining us. I love you so much. Hairline loves you so much. Hairline, what do you have to say? Night one, let's just give our last thoughts before people tune out. 
Um, my overall thoughts, I'm pumped for night two. This was so satisfying that if this was the only night of Mania, I'd be chill with it. Um, but we get a night two. We're so blessed. And Triple H is operating on another level. The Rock is operating on another level. Yeah, Jade needs some great... Tomorrow's going to be like worker, worker, work. Tomorrow's matches are crazy. Hairline, your thoughts on tonight and your thoughts on tomorrow. And uh, yeah. Yeah, like I said, tonight was one of the best WrestleManias in a good decade or so, correct? Um, and tonight also had some record-breaking events for WWE, which was all a positive. Um, obviously, we addressed the negatives. There was some greenness from Jade Cargill. Um, a little bit of sloppiness here and there. Um and then okay, so tomorrow some fucking huge stack matches here. We're fucking we're intrigued Dude. about the bloodline rules. Boom. We uh we get Drew McIntyre who's gonna win the fucking title, obviously. Boom against Seth, Drew and Seth. Right. That's gonna be crazy. Uh, okay, so what else? What else are you hyped for tomorrow? Most of all, Drew McIntyre, man. Like, yeah, yeah, like exactly. Fan, You've been you know riding how... for him since day one. Yeah. Guys, listen, at Pro Wrestle Times is where you check us out. At Pro Wrestle Clips is where you check us out as well. I've been the infallible Phil Marks. He has been Hairline the Heater. We love you all so much. Come check us Bro! out tomorrow after Mania Night 2, and we'll give, us, we'll give you guys our overall wrap-up and our predictions and blah, 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 blah. Love you, Hairline. Take it easy, brother.